Welcome to the Supercar Connection podcast. Find us on social media at Supercar Connection and full episodes weekly on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. I'm Gavin, this is my boy Joe, and we're here to talk about cars. So we're here with Kevin, Jaff, and Cosm, and uh, we're in Novara Motorsports right now. So why don't you just start by telling us kind of where we're at? Like, what is this place we're sitting in? Obviously, the cars behind us, if you're watching, are ridiculous. Thank like, you. this is the world you've built. Thank you. That's got to feel incredible. It feels surreal. To like, what it, that might get picked up. <laughs> yeah, that might get picked up. Yeah, we're Let's probably going to get picked up. Yeah, if you heard cool the start of, what, what was that, the McLaren? That's a McLaren. 570. 570 that was a McLaren that's not in the shot. Yeah. Sounds good. When Let you're at a up. shop that a 570 doesn't make the background, bro, that's how you know you're at the right fucking <laughs> that's place. Right. We, that's yeah, right. We didn't that's right. have room for the 570, and there's a bunch of shit that you all are not even going to look at because this is the highlight right here, bro. This is the highlight. You should so, see when I have meetings in the office, bro. Fucking hear this shit all the time. I was like, how the fuck can you even have a meeting in there? And he's probably got V12s going crazy in there. Yeah, I yeah. speak louder. Exhaust systems, I, just, everything I just speak louder. Yeah. Yeah. What is Novara? So Novara Motorsports is a shop where you can get anything done. From paint protection film, lowering, maintenance, and most importantly, we make our own bespoke custom exhaust here. So most shops, they like to say they get your exhaust made at the shop. They're lying to you. They're buying them from overseas, rebranding them. If you look right there, obviously it's not in the camera, but that's the entire section is where we make our exhaust in-house. Bespoke. This SVJ, our exhaust. My Urus, our downpipes. My 720, our downpipes and exhaust. That 720. 20, same exact thing. That thing's gonna get our exhaust. This G63, we're gonna make an exhaust for that. That 570 has our exhaust. That 911 Turbo has our exhaust. My wide body AMG has our exhaust. Yeah, so we How just, much goes into like developing an exhaust for so one of these cars? So we partnered up with Voodoo Designs. So long story short, me and my brother own fast food establishments and we decided to open up a shop. Uh, I think it was 2021 or 20, I think it was 2021. I don't remember. This was not last year, but the year before that. So was that 2022? Uh, Shit. Yeah. 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 So May of 2022, <laughs> we just decided to have our own sh shop and we signed a 1,000 square foot lease. Had no guys, no nothing. We didn't know what to do. Nothing. Didn't know how to get the wheels and the tires and the wraps and everything. So we initially started with just wrapping cars. That was it. Slowly, the business fucking snowballed into an 11,000 square foot facility 19 months later and now yeah. that's an unreal time frame yeah, and for, here's yeah, the kicker real. here's the kicker i love to say this part we have not pulled a dollar out of the business yet Fuck yeah, just baby. constantly reinvesting reinvesting from that's the how you've grown it like, that fast huh Literally. well yeah because so to me there's two types of individuals one people who start something to make money now which is totally fine then there's other people that start things to grow them at like a rapid, rapid rate. Long-term mindset. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we don't care to pull the money out. We have the fast food spots, which pays for my cars, his cars, and all that. And it's ironic because people think that these are all paid from the shop. Right. right. I mean, that's it's what like, I assume. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's not. Nothing so just is. let that sink in. Like, he's got this whole orchestration here, and not a dollar comes from this. Like, he's got the 720, the Urus, the from... AMG. From well, other how, business ventures and then is able to just like build this out. You literally know how dedicated you are to <laughs> scaling this thing to the full yeah. degree. For most people who don't really like understand the degree, a thousand square foot when you started, how big is that for an automotive center? 20 feet. Anything automotive related. That's nothing. It that ain't 50 shit. feet long and 20 feet wide. A it's car ridiculous. is about seven to nine feet wide. So, so you, you can't even fit two cars it's side by side. And when I first met this yeah. guy, I brought a G63 <laughs> that took up thing. all the fucking space. Mm -hmm. And I let them do the PPF work on it. And yep. um, I was between their shop and another shop. And I just was vibing with him so much that I was like, you know what? I'm just going to trust that even though that this thing is in a fucking janky little square. <laughs> But Thanks. I trusted it because I was Thanks, like, the, these guys, I, I think these guys know what they're doing. And I love the passion that comes out of that. And we just vibe very, very well. Yeah. So, and they, they did the job and I was happy with it. I was like, I'm going to keep coming back. Yeah, bro. And then Thank they you. did all my cars afterwards. They did my Huracan. They did my G GT3 RS, uh, my SVJ, 765 mm -hmm. LT. Every car I brought back to them. We got the SVJ right behind us. How about that Fitment? That fitment is kind of crazy. That fitment is <laughs> crazy. They did that fitment. Anyone that hates on these wheels too, just I mean, just wait till you see them yeah. in, in in real life. Shout they look ridiculous. They look fucking bonkers. They look bro. incredible. Bonkers, 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 bonkers. So I'm a, I'm an MV Forge fan 
boy. Yeah. My 720s, MV Forge wheels. My Urus is getting MV Forge. My AMG, I'm actually going to change those to MVs too. My next car is going to be MVs. But one of my all-time favorite wheels are these, the HRE 501s. He's the one who convinced me. Yeah, I'm the one who said it. To all you guys who talk talk shit, that was me. Yeah, so (laughs) he gave me the idea about doing them. It's your fault they talk shit. Honestly, I wasn't for it at first. I was more of like an open spoke type of thing. I wanted to like see the calipers and everything like that. But I kept seeing it over and over and over. I'm like, this is it. Looks clean. This is it. And now it's been a my I I think it's probably one of the most iconic SVJs to date right bro, now. Bro, it is. I, I, it gets it recognized all the time. Bro, mm-hmm. it 100% is, bro. I didn't even think in a Did you a, see it? I did, I don't know if it was you 100%, but I was in this shit. This was maybe like 3 months ago. We were in like Encino area. There's mm-hmm. a little shopping center on Ventura, and I literally saw white oh SVJ. I don't think it was matte though. I want to say it was gloss finish. With literally white and white wheels and then in our podcast i quoted you i was like that shit looked like pacman's but i don't even know if he was fucking in encino or if he was <laughs> all the way on that side of la and there's another white on white up, everybody up started north. commenting based on just your white on white yeah. svj I just assume i was like why the fuck is so everyone has so many opinions on these white on white wheels i said that shit's hot i don't know why everyone's it's fucking hating good on that to me I mean, the funniest thing too is that they always talk shit but none of them have one yeah that's that's the name of the that's game, what blows the my game mind. that's what genuinely blows my mind what color is your bugatti yeah i don't want to be that but it's kind of like if you're, I don't want to say anything. Bro, I'm going to get flamed. It's <laughs> envious people, and That's the whole point that's of this. Oh, okay. All right, the good news is the flames, all they do is is boost the engagement. All right, bro. That's so the haters. Case, all, they, if you don't have all they do is help us out. Please don't comments about the wheel. No, bro. Absolutely. <laughs> like, it's, it basically comes down to like envious people, bro. Yep. Like, in my opinion. Yo, don't probably, get me started on that, bro. Homie. No, I'm going to get you started on this shit. <laughs> yeah. It's probably the most, or some of the most dangerous people that are out there, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That see others with success no matter how they got it whatever it is no matter it is they got it and you don't i got so you have you got two choices do i envy those people or do i lean in and be like all right they know more they know something i don't how do i scale myself to get to that position you gotta start asking questions at this point exactly bro because obviously if like for example you have an svj okay i obviously don't have an svj i would love to own that car so for me to be able to sit back and be like all right kev is able to do these things to get to that point instead of looking at it like why does that motherfucker have and I don't? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like there's the two scales look out of it. And you have 99% of the population that gets trapped into that mentality. It's right. like he got it for whatever, however he got it. Versus the 1% that's like, no, no, no. If he can do it, I'm going to make that that's shit happen right. too, bro. Yeah, bro, you're just scamming people. That's a, I'm the best <laughs> scammer. The best, He's the best it, scammer in the, the game. Which <laughs> trips me out. I was in Monterey Car Week. I okay. see the comments left and right. This is blah, blah, blah. Me and my brother in Monterey Car Week, some yep. random ass kid walked up to KP in front of me and had a McLaren key in his hand in front of my eyes and my brother's eyes and said, I have this because of you. Yeah. We were like, what? That was crazy. Fuck? That's awesome, bro. Swear to yeah. God. Swear to God. And, and then like, and then some other kid comes down to see me here, shows up out of the blue, drove down from Fontana, and he came down. He just wanted to meet me and see the shop, whatever, blah, blah. And then he flips his phone. He did eighty four, eighty six thousand dollars in sales. He goes, I took KP's fucking th- thing. I was like, what the yep. fuck? And I immediately pulled out my phone. I was like, look, motherfuckers, this shit works. It's the people that sit there and complain and bitch and they don't want to take no fucking action. He never in a million years, or even or even I, say we will make you money. But you take this, you learn from it, and it depends on what you do. Do with what it. you do. That's it. And that's why I do what I do, man. Because it's like you never know whose life you're going to change. Yep, literally, you never bro. know. It's fucking beautiful. You never know. As long as you're adding value, and again, like you said, you are giving people the tools to do everything. Because obviously, it's a fucking success story, mm-hmm. success story, everything in between. So it, it can be done. It's yep. whether or not you have it in you to fucking make it happen. You gotta have that dog in you, man. You gotta have F- a fucking dog in you. Thing. So I started my thing, Novara Business ta- Tactics. It's called NBT. So it's like this community where basically I go live, my br- brother goes live, and somebody else who's like on a Manu m- mental status, like they're done, done good, they go live. So three times a week, yeah. and it's this huge community that I made, right? I got somebody who commented he buys his cars from there. That started September 1st. You already had your cars. I bought everything at like, yeah. right mm-hmm. that. I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. Bro, you know bro. what I mean? And then they also don't know that I own this, 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 this. I don't ever like say it because yeah. I'm not that guy. Oh, I own this, this, this. You know what I mean? But it's like, you're you the don't same know. people that don't value information because, like, you look at so a lot of these guys, like, uh, I don't know, uber successful guys. Um, Hermosi and people like that, mm-hmm. they talk about spending like millions of dollars on courses yeah. and mm-hmm. on like on information from successful people. Yeah. 
And then you've got someone that's just like, well, for me, I crying for like sell, bucks. Yeah, of course. I sell like a com community. And I'll, right. like, that's, that's, but it's that's still, right. it's like, it's game, it's knowledge, and it's information. And on top of that, that money is used to reinvest into the community, which is sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you wrote books, no one would give you a hard time. Yeah. No. Right. It's like, that's the traditional way. It's like, yeah, but yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, well, now it's just on video and on audio because yeah. that's more accessible to people. There's more time for people to do that yeah, than okay. read a book. But you're gonna hate on me for it. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. All this is just repackaged. Yeah, it's repackaged. Well, that exactly. and me and him, especially him. But I get DMs on DMs like, "Hey, I have this. I have this. I have this." Well, I can't respond to every single freaking yep. guy. You know, I, yeah. I can't. So here's a one central hub. Boom. There you go. You and know? us as business people is like, why wouldn't you be able to create something where you win and they win yeah. as well? It's like a no brainer in business. Like I if you have the mindset, anyone who who who's in that game understands. Like this makes sense to do. Literally. Yeah. I feel like 100%. money, bro, to a certain degree, and you guys comment on this and correct me if I'm wrong, but money is fucking 90% mindset, bro. Like, you know how yeah. you're talking about people complaining about $50? Yep. If you're mm. stuck in a $50 mindset, you're worried about saving $20, $25, $50 here, bro, you're missing all the thousands, hundreds, tens mm -hmm. of millions of dollars mm -hmm. coming through the back door. People like, like exactly you said, for example, whatever your course price is, everything in between, I imagine you probably get bombarded with fucking people who are like, mm -hmm. why the fuck would I pay this and this and this? But they don't see the fucking value that you're giving That's them right. the tools Service. to literally do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Especially you too. You you have an ongoing community. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a one-time product thing. You buy it and then take the information and go with it. Because mm -hmm. I imagine you do live updates and you mm -hmm. said you go live and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. A continuous community that continues to grow and it's going to evolve because you're going to learn have new experiences, mm -hmm. you're running the new struggles, and as you grow, they grow. Yeah. And then they can even, granted, not saying that this will happen, but like, let's say, God forbid, something happens, you learn, have a learning experience, you make a mistake, you pass that on to your viewers, mm -hmm. they can learn from your mistake mm -hmm. instead of going through it themselves. Now you just added time and value to them. Because mm -hmm. right. in my opinion, yeah. number one fucking thing to do in life is learn from mistakes, yep. others' mistakes. You not should. make them shits yourself. Yep. You can save time like a motherfucker like that. But sometimes I think everybody still needs to make those their, mistakes. Their yeah. own mistakes. Yeah. Their own like lane, their passage. own mistakes and shit like that. Yeah. yeah. But if you can kind of like, I guess, pull If you can avoid it, obviously, obviously, it. Obviously, yeah. obviously, yeah. obviously. You still got to buy the course from the actual scammer so you can learn <laughs> which <laughs> courses are scammers. Yeah. You got to get burnt first. Game, you know? That's yeah. part of the growing pain. Yeah. Right. You got to get burnt first. You got to get burnt once so you can then read through, all right, this guy's got actual value. I think a lot of people don't realize too, to even be in the position to buy what he sells, you are privileged as is. Yeah, Fuck that's it, right. Not everybody can afford to pay that. Yep. Fuck no. Because and to buy what he has, yeah. you're basically paying to not do the hard work. It's still hard work, yeah. but you're paying to not go through the dirty grind. This is easy. Here you go. Not easy. I got to like fucking think before I fucking speak here. <laughs> it, it's, it's very much. So. It's done for you. Just learn it. Mm -hmm. Here, this is you don't have to sift through so many fucking things when there's when there's guys yeah. you can youtube it for sure or you can just 100%. get it done here done but you might be looking at the wrong thing exactly I would imagine. absolutely yeah. and the the thing is is that you, to to be able to have the money to expend into you know knowledge or whatever like that you have to be a certain type of person and have a certain type of skill set to even save that much money in the first place right it's not like an easily accessible thing where it's five bucks anyone can do it whatever those people aren't going to do shit with it but when you've already um, warts for your pennies and dollars and that you value that more you put it you're putting it on the line you're more likely to get shit done it's exactly what the fuck i did yeah exactly what i did i used my own hard-earned money put it on the line i said this has to work this yeah. has to work can we talk about your cars a little bit yeah so we'll start with kevin yeah i was looking at like your you know my the my cars story highlights oh and just, yeah like i feel like it started three years ago with like a with a boxster spider <laughs> yeah that yeah. wasn't even like that was not a long time ago i want to say the timestamps were like 2021 and then fast forward to today mm -hmm. your lineup now so like walk us through uh like the cars you've had yeah where you are now what's next oh, we'll start with that well, and then we'll go on in, for sure yeah, yeah. yeah. dude i mean yeah i mean research you know gotta do your homework yeah, yeah. yeah. this guy did it all man he probably he knows my social security number i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> right watch out boy. so yeah. i mean what got me into cars heavily um was uh when i bought a honda s2000 that was that was like really what got me into cars more seriously um and shout out to adrian's brother byron i learned stick shift in his miata uh so that when i got because ap2s they only come in uh manual transmission on s2000s right mm -hmm. so um that was the first car i ever bought myself my mom bought me a sign on tc so it was a nice little cute little sporty coupe whatever but yeah. you know it, it is what I think it that's is. the most ticketed car in america probably i wouldn't doubt that <laughs> yeah wouldn't doubt that 
So she got me that car as like a high school graduation gift type of thing and everything like that. And then after I started uh, working as a personal trainer, had my own money and everything like that, that's when I got into the Honda S2000. That got me deeper into the car world. Um, and then ironically, I got into a Mazda 3 right after because I needed a commuter. Um, but it was still a manual transmission car. So like I was still an enthusiast, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then uh, when I first started making some good money from my Amazon business, that's when I got into the Tesla gang. And then I became a vegan for some short time, you know? <laughs> Holy shit, you've and, been through it. Yeah, I was, I was going, hey, look. Did my, Tesla do that to you or my, what the fuck? Tesla, 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 Tesla did that. Hold on, you tell, you actually became a vegan? I was a vegan for a little bit. Oh, I thought you were just saying, I'm vegan because like, I drive. Like, you actually oh, vegan? electric car, no, yeah. No, I'm fucking Oh, electric. God, no, no, no. hell I Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, good, good. That's okay. Because I had a Tesla. Electric car joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Casa. No, I just want to make sure. Hey, keep up, bro. He had me too. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was That's like crazy. Vegan Tesla? Look, it's. <laughs> Teslas are, are soulless vehicles. That's what they are. Soulless That's what they are. Too. But, but they're good at what they do. Or what yeah. they're meant for, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. But I will give it to them. They have the best autopilot system. That shit is that, crazy. Is, that shit's useful. That shit's I'll useful tell you that. That shit is fucking Absolutely useful. Especially bro. when I was commuting a lot. So useful. Fuck right? yeah. Um, but, you know, I, for, for a few years, you know, I was making good money, but I didn't allow myself to really uh, uh, spoil myself further, you know? Um, so, and I was afraid to spend money because I was like, fuck, you know, I have all this money and everything. What if it just all goes away? And everything? I, I was, Scary I got, shitty mindset. I, yeah, it's, Never. it's weird. Cause when I started making money, I had an abundant mindset, but then I got back into a scarcity mindset once I had it and I was like, fuck, I, I don't want to lose it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then it wasn't until like, I finally said, you know what? I, I'm going to have some money. Let me just actually use it. And then that's when I got to the 718, uh, spider, my first Porsche it was my first six figure car. Um, and then that was also a manual transmission as well. Like I've been driving manual transmission for like majority of my life, like uh, my driving career at least. Um, so I love it. And, um, yeah, so then that's when I got into my first supercar, the Huracan. I got a G63 as well. Um, and then moved on. I sold the G63 and the Huracan for my SVJ. Um, and I also got a McLaren 765 LT and then I got a Porsche GT3 RS. The order on that is all off. Okay, but, yeah, 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 the order's off. But that's all the cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it went it went 718, then the Huracan, and G63. Then I got the Porsche GC3 RS. Then I got the McLaren 765 LT. Then I got the SVJ. All right. Then the Kona. Oh, yeah. And then I got, oh, I, I forgot that. I, I got a Kona. One day I hope to get that yeah, much yeah. bread right yeah, on the Kona. <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> forget about, forget my, about the I, name I literally it. forgot I got a Kona. Yeah, that's my, my, that's my daily beat. What's been your favorite? My favorite favorite you better answer this right kev yeah because if you say something that i hope you don't say we're gonna have problems bro all right well then i shouldn't say tesla then <laughs> no, i'm just kidding <laughs> he, he doesn't want you to jump on your car right, right now the, don't say oh, the, don't say the people okay say the okay say the look, look, look. Don't say the okay so my favorite car of all time right now is the seven or i'm sorry the svj <laughs> But the, the 765 LT is my favorite driver car. Mm. So okay. overall, SVJ is my favorite. But if I want a car that I really want to drive and have fun with, 765 LT. That McLaren does it right for a driver's car. Um, the Porsche gt 3 RS is a great car. But once you get into cars like that, I mean, it's hard to go back into the Porsche, bro. What about these cars makes it difficult to go back into the Porsche or because Porsche? Because they're so much faster and well, so much Porsche? more capable. The Porsche gt 3 RS. Right, the the GT3 RS is a very capable car. It's a great car. I think it's a bit overrated. Kevin just said it's slow as fuck. Slow? It, it's a fast car. Come on, no, no, no. It's a In fast car. Compared to the 765, no, no, no. Compared to right. this, but like right. you gotta like like you gotta see where I'm coming from because I had a 718 too. Like you're not driving so on the track. Up. Yeah, right, right, right. So you're not setting lap times. Exactly. I'm not there setting <laughs> lap times or anything like that. I was saying, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe this guy. I know the time how fast I can get from Irvine to Corona. Yeah, like, he does do that. He does. Yeah. He does yeah, do yeah, that. But like when you yeah. have cars this fast with this much like appeal to it as well, um, it, it is hard to go back into the Porsche GC3 RS. And um, I think it's a great car. But after you get past that point, it's really hard to get back into it. And I think it's a little bit overrated. You know, mm. right now I feel like. All the BMW boys are fangirling over the oh fucking God, bro. GT3 started, RS, and they're like, "That's their dream car and everything." But it's like, bro, there's more out there. I, I promise you, there's more out there that you'll be impressed with. You Somehow know? we say it every episode, but the 911 is like the world's greatest cult leader. Yeah, bro, it's hey. just what's trendy right now. It's what's mainstream. It's because you don't people. Know what my bro, favorite car is. I don't know how the fuck <laughs> is it that Porsche turbo. Is. Yeah, obviously, yeah, I might. He might not like this one, but I don't know how Porsche has been able to fucking brainwash these people over 20 years, bro. They I'll tell make. You what. Go ahead, hit me. Hit me. I'll tell you what. It's, hit me. It's, it's and it's. 
So I, do you want to know the cars that I've had? Absolutely, bro. Like the through. cool cars that yes. I've had. So my like first cool car was a 991 Career S. I was 21, 22. I put 80 something thousand miles on that car in about a year and some change. In a year and some change. Yeah. So I know a lot of, oh, it's bullshit. You can't drive that many <laughs> miles. It's impossible. You know how much that is on gas? Yeah. This I dude drives. Let me gas. tell you. I've, I've already heard you know a couple me, you know, stories. I drive. It's I wild. drive my car. He drives. I love driving. That's all I care about. I don't have a life. I work cars, work cars, work cars. That's it. That is life. I don't, there's nothing outside that's of life. That's all I Maybe mean. the gym. That's I, the whole I, reason I we're doing this. To be honest with you, I swear to God, if it were not for cars, I would retire. That's it. Hell I'm yeah. done. I don't need to do anything else. I have the Hell cool yeah. cars, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I make whatever I make. I'm comfortable, thank God. But because of cars, I want to make more. So anyways, so my first cool car was a 991 Carrera S. Then I had an AMG GTS in white. I put 82,000 miles on that car in a year and some change. Then I bought a 911 Turbo, which I still have. I bought that with, I think, 30,000 miles. And it's currently sitting at 119,999 miles, actually, literally, on the odometer. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, that car, I put 86,000 miles on that car in a year and some change. And I have the proof for everything. <laughs> records on records. Snapchat stories that show, hey, this month, 4,500 yeah. miles. This month, 5,000 miles. Literally, like, progressively more and more and more. Um, and then what I get after that? So you're US, the reason for global warming. Then I got a, that. Then I bought a white Urus. I sold that in, like, a week. And then I got a G-Wagon 4x4 squared. And then I bought a McLaren 720. And then I bought a Urus again. Oh, and I also had a C63. Load of crap. Piece of shit car. Um, yeah. But for me, Porsche is my favorite. So you actually really are fucking with Porsche like that. If I, if you put a gun in my head and said you had to drive one car for the rest of your life, it would be a 911 Turbo. 991. Not even 992. See, what if it was that's stock? Crazy. Stock, yeah. Stock, yeah, still. Dude, the way Porsche modded out, handles, yeah. the way Porsche handles, the, the fucking the response... Bro, the, I really, the the, the I fact that some. I can feel I the road some. articulate. I really, I really thought. I, I the, really thought we had some. Bro. The fact, <laughs> the fact that I can feel the road articulate through the steering wheel, is ridiculous. And I, the way you can cut up in that thing and not even have to look nowhere, and the power delivery is perfect. You know, in the AMG, you have to downshift at least one time to get into the right power band. On the turbo, no, you're straight. It's just perfect, and it's comfortable too. And up, Porsche does have really great stock fitment. They're, oh my God, on the GT3 RS, it is beautiful. Oh, not perfect. to mention reliable. It is reliable. That yeah. is my only car that hasn't ever died. And I beat the shit out of my cars. Everybody, if Jaff can vouch, Kevin can vouch. It hurts me. It hurts. I <laughs> destroy hurts. my I cars. And, and I don't think a lot of people understand what that means. I launch control at every light. I push my cars. I each... This McLaren gets taken to 130 every single day. Fuck yeah. You know, it's like I love pushing my cars. And that Porsche was the only car that lasted. Only car. Let me let me ask you this. All those things you listed, right? Mm -hmm. On paper, it fucking those things are incredible. But when you get in it and then you get back in the 720 or you get an SVJ or you get in anything else, you don't feel like that, like in my opinion, that gigantic contrast. Absolutely. The, the way that the I mean, we kind of test to it as like driving experience driver Absolutely. experience the way that the car makes you fucking feel yep that's the whole that's Absolutely. my whole knock on the car is it literally like for example the brand new 992 turbo s mm -hmm. that's like bmw everybody in between's fanboy cultist like yep. that is the cult leader right now but in, i've driven a couple of them and mm -hmm. my whole thing is every time i get in that car it does zero to 60 incredible mm -hmm. it handles like a motherfucker mm -hmm. i could daily drive it, it. it's got space but it's just something about it where mm -hmm. i just fucking like i get in something like this or even bro even the z06 Compared to that shit, I would like the feel and the the even the sound like the four five eight yeah. the driving experience in that car. I would take that shit ten times over than what the nine nine two Turbo S gives me. You know what's funny? Um, when before I got my seven eighteen and I was looking for like my first like really cool car, I actually was in between a Turbo S mm. and a fucking seven eighteen. Mm. And the reason why I chose the seven eighteen was because it was a lot more of a driver experience, raw, yeah. and it was more raw, right? And the Turbo S just didn't uh, didn't have that for me, right? It was a little bit too refined for my liking so i wanted something a little bit more raw and so that's what gave it up for me so that's why i think also the turbo s is a little overrated but it's also a great daily if you're choosing for if you're using me, it for that. it's i pound miles on cars see that's yeah that you actually really you yeah. use the shit what it's made for bro yeah so right. like be if, moving. if i'm like for example that mclaren i put 4600 miles on it in june for those of you guys who don't know that's my mclaren i bought it in june i put 4600 miles on it it died for five months i just got it back two weeks back 
Two days after I got it, I drove it up to San Francisco, Sacramento, and drove it back down. Um, so I drive. When I, I drive. I fucking drive. You got people in all these places, or are you just driving? Um, Sacramento, yes, I did all have vast. somebody there, but all vast no majority of the times, no, yeah, bro. So I just, literally just going. pick up and go. I just no destiny. I love driving, man. That's awesome. it's my escape. And somebody said yeah. it once, and they hit the nail on the fucking head. They said that the reason why I love driving, and that was my like aha moment, was because when I drive, I'll just shoot straight. I don't go 85. I'm going 110 wherever I fuck, just just. You got music spin. on or nothing? Oh yeah, He's music blasting, 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 windows blasting. fucking blasting. down. He'll I'm, blast the same song like eight bro, times in a row. Cassim, you and I are the same, hitting, bro. Yeah, you know? we just didn't eight fuck with Porsche, bro. We would literally be the same. Dude, well, <laughs> we, 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 well, well that, and, that's but it, bro. the thing is that when I'm driving, everything gets blocked out. There's yeah. only two things that matter at that time: don't crash and don't go to jail. That's it. Nothing else matters. Fuck, there's a time Nothing I thought we were going to jail. So you, you, you gave it? There's a time I thought we were going to go to jail. Story time. Story time. We're going to get into that. Story time. Story time. Story time. Yeah. 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 Story time. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. But for but for me, that's why driving's dude, it's, I, I forget my problems. I forget the issues. I forget the business stuff and everything and going on. It's just, I just zone out. Yeah. It's a place of zen. Yeah. Literally. Then you appreciate a driving experience more than anybody. Yes. And you still would pick the Porsche over everything, bro? Yes. That's, That's why I think right. he picks it, though. That's crazy. Yeah. Bro, you, you at the end of the day... Taylor to the two ends. Go ahead. I, I, I know, I know we, we like to agree on a lot of stuff, but at the end of the day, you got to let people it. love what they love, man. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. You got to let I them love. Like, this is his thing. Yeah. He explained why he loves it, why he feels the way he does. You got to just... Maybe you there's a bias, it, bro. because that was my first, like borderline supercar. Yeah. It's not a supercar, but it is, but it's not, you know? Yeah, it kind of right. is. Um, that was like the first car that I bought. Like nobody knew about it. Not my mom, not my dad, not nobody. And I like surprised my whole family. And it was just kind of like a, my first like, aha, like I did it, you know? Mm. So may maybe there's a little bit of bias sure. towards that. Yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a, uh, um, an emotional attachment to Absolutely. that moment Fuck because yeah. it, was, it was more than just the car. It was the experience around the car. Yeah. And, and, and I, I got denied by eight banks trying to buy it. I was like ah! 22, 23 years old. I love it, old. bro. I love it. Yeah. But you were going to make that shit happen regardless. I had, I had a pace. God, yep. This is going to be so embarrassing. I'm going to get fucking flamed. <laughs> I, so because I put 82,000 miles on my AMG GTS, <laughs> okay i owed on the car seventy two thousand dollars okay guess how much i sold it for to porsche pasadena russ russ neck it was a gts gts why well, you're 82 it had 82,000 miles 2016 on what year did you yeah, sell it 2016 white c it's carbon it's such a cool car what year did you sell it what year did i sell? i sold it in 2019 or 2020 so before the covid pop of everything i sold it I, no this is right before covid i, I think. think with gts was I was right in the middle was, of covid i was I'm, we're fanatics when it comes to just but like with that many miles there's probably like only one in the country so i i go owed 70. on it for seventy two thousand. i sorry i owed on it seventy two thousand dollars and i, I said, had to sell it to get my to what you said porsche pasadena yes so they probably get you dog shit because they're fucking they're yeah. motherfuckers up there i would say 68. probably i'll go 62 what do you think Football. i already know the uh, answer I'm gonna say 50s, 42,000. 42,000, oh. bro. They docked. Bro. Damn. 42. The thing was, the car was shot to shit. So I and it, I was pretty certain the car needed a new fucking trans. Yeah. Oh, like, you okay. know what? Hey, have the fucking car. Then I said, whatever the fuck, just take it off my hands. Right. Because if I got to pay for a new training and I got to payments and everything, I got a new transmission. I wasn't gonna say it. I if I if it. I got to buy a new transmission and I got to sell it and awesome. pay the negative. <laughs> I'd rather just pay the negative right. and rinse They're like, this is some Turo. This is so some I Turo. literally had a, I swear to God, I was so bad. I was like 23. I cut them a check for $30,000 oh, to, to, to just sell to my take car. the problem off yeah. your hands. Yeah. Hey, yeah. bro, but in all, in all reality, I imagine that saved you a ton of time. Did yes. it not? Yeah. And course. you were able to go on to the next thing exactly. and start solving the next problem and Sometimes push yourself. Everybody, to do everybody that. call me crazy. Yeah, bro. You know, I was just not on to the next, the next, oh, the bro, next. You don't next. understand. Time is the most fucking valuable thing that we have. So the fact that you're able to, you did what you did. Where you call it an experience, mistake, whatever in between, you got it off your fucking shoulders, off your plate. Yeah. What's the next move? It's a mental strain too. It is. It's bro, like 100%. a weight in your head that yeah, you're just like, sure. yeah, it's there, you know. So like, you got it off. It's fuck it. I'm negative, but it's yeah. over. It's yeah, okay, true. I'm done. True. What yeah. did you roll into right after that? I bought my 911 Turbo. And that was the 911 Turbo you've been talking about. Oh, perfect example where you said Porsche, Porsche. I had my 991 Carrera S. I fucking drove the living shit out of that car. That was like my first like sports car. Loved it. When I went to go sell that car, that thing too. That's actually, I don't, I don't, I don't want to tell that story. <laughs> okay, so oh, when I sold that car, when I sold story. that car, three hours later, my brother sends me a link to uh, Fletcher Jones Mercedes, is AMG, right? 
I took the car on a test drive. It was the white GTS. I drove it and I remember I was on the test drive. I took a hard right and it understeered like crazy. That moment I realized what Porsche was. That makes I still sense. bought I mean, yeah, the car because it was sense. fucking right, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Popping and everything. But at that moment I realized there is a difference. Yeah, the Porsche isn't loud. It's not fancy dancy. But God damn it, when you fucking turn the motherfucker, it hooks and goes, dude. It's so much fun. See, for me, though, that one car is going to be a McLaren 765 LT. Mm. I think, and it, even a 720S, I think is the perfect supercar anyone can get. You get the best value bang for your buck. 720, 720 or 765 LT. See, that's crazy because Will last week told us the 720S was the least favorite supercar he's driven. Mm. Really? That, really? Opinion, yeah, I'm saying the contrast of opinions. And you're yeah. talking about McLaren, too. Oh, I, yeah. I know most people when it comes to the McLaren brand, especially like ownership experience, have literally probably the most drastic fucking opinions and experiences. Now, behind us, you got your 720S. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows you got a 765LT. Yep. Talk a little bit about your you guys, if your experiences are as different or if they're similar. Oh, they're completely of, of oh, yeah. owning a McLaren. Well, he so, just said it was out for like five months. So. Yeah. yeah, so I've put 5,000 miles on my McLaren within like eight months or something like that, right? Okay. And it has been bulletproof. No problems whatsoever. I I don't think have, thanks you've done to an Novara Motorsports. Yeah, <laughs> Mod and it's Novara modded. Care, that's yeah. the thing. That's Novara the crazy thing. Different. And it's modded. Novara Motorsports did the work. Let me on spit it. the mods out for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. So go ahead. Kevin bought the car. He's like, I want this thing to be stupid. So run it, dog. So he upgraded the intercoolers and injectors. Mm -hmm. Did downpipes. Did the cap back. And then we did a tune on it. So he's mm -hmm. pushing 989 to the wheels. All fabbed in here? All fabbed All right here. there. All yeah. fabbed so in here. One stop shop. Baby. down pipes in the cat back ex exhaust, voodoo designs, fabbed right Made there. Made in America. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then we did, uh, what did we do? MVs? MV forged carbon fiber MV wheels. MV forged carbon oh. barrel yep. wheels, oh. which I try to detract him from that. I was like, you don't need to drop 30 grand yeah, on that fucking wheels. He's like, I'll go fucking like, buy it. it. Like, All right, let's run it out. Yeah. So, I mean, and I'm not that guy. Oh, yeah, buy it, buy it. No, I'm like, dog, you don't need this. Really expensive right I feel but you. you know him he don't he don't give a fuck yeah he's like, he's no, like run it up fuck it. Yeah. all right if you want to novatech door sills and carbon yep. mso carbon wing and then novatech uh roof scoop carbon and then novatech lower i think did we do the no we what? didn't do the spring no, those are already lowered that's right, yeah, right. That's that, and then i think that's it yeah and that car has been fucking bulletproof yeah. and it's like it's hard to really oh, beat. hd Tuning. HD right. tuning. Shout out, Matt. That's yeah. important. Shout out, Matt. That's probably the most important fucking problem. Yeah, you got to have that. Bro, you got to think about it. This car is crazy. Okay, first off, McLaren sandbags are numbers. They're way more than what it actually yeah. is, right? So 765 LC is more like 800 realistically, probably. But you're getting that much car for 450 grand or something like that. And you get the doors going up. You get exotic looks and everything. It's And even with the 720, it's like you get just so much value on it. If anybody's thinking about getting a McLaren 720, though, I really recommend you get at least a 2020 and above. That's where, like, you get less problems. Mine's a 2021. Okay. No issues. This fucker didn't listen to me and got a, 20, a 19. So I got a CPO, dog. I, fuck the CPO. I thought it was he's great. Got, he's, he is Novara, so he ain't tripping. Uh, you, 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 you didn't fab all up, the same so. stuff for yours? I didn't have time. <laughs> shit, shit died before I could do anything. Before you could do anything to it. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about the story, how it died. What exactly was that whole thing? Okay, actually, happened? dude, this is a horrible. Okay, listen to this. I'm going to just condense it. I buy the car. I'm flipping the fuck out. I have a fucking supercar. When was this? This was in June. In Last June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recent. Yeah. So at this point, I have a C63S. I have a, what else do I have that time? G-Wagon, 404 squared. Yep. GTS. GTS. And I just bought this thing. And so I'm, love the, the day I got the car, mind you, I bought this from McLaren San Francisco or Sacramento, San Francisco. I paid an additional $6,000 to have the car McLaren certified. Warranty and everything. The day I get the car, when I'm driving it, mind you, 14 people drove the car before me. When I got the car delivered, I invited friends down and some kids that kind of like look up to me. Right. And so I wanted to give them a uh, experience. So I let them drive the car before I even did, which is fucking awesome. And they were like, "Oh my god, I'm fucking McLaren!" It's so fucking cool. That. Um, but anyways, uh, so when I got the car, it had this weird ass tick, 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 mm -hmm. tick sound. And I thought, I don't know, I was like, that's we just thought that that's what, yeah, we just thought that's how it is. It's I fucking fuck certified, that. I didn't think anything fucking of it. Progressively, the sound got worse, 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 worse. Eventually, I do the rap and everything about it, blah, blah, blah. I throw the downpipes on the car and then I tune it for some fucking boom, right? It's it's sounding nuts. Basically, come to find out, they McLaren sold me the car with a cracked header when I did the downpipes and the tune and everything the uh, extra pops and bangs blew the header and shredded the header. 
That so hurts. I was like, fuck. At that time, simultaneously, we're getting ready for Monterey Car Week. So I said, fuck, fuck that. Me, I'm not going to go take the car there and have them do it. Let's just remove everything and have it done here. So I remove everything, weld the header, everything back on. They uh, That was done there. Slap the car back up. Everything's cool. Everything's great. My wheels, I ordered a temporary set of MVE forged wheels. Then these ones came in. When I threw them on, I take the car out for the first drive, and it just, boom, limp fucking mode, drops out of gear. I'm like, what the fuck? It does what it do. It I'm does like, what, what the hell's going on? I turn the car off, turn it back on, same shit. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Long story short, try to diagnose it here. We couldn't solve it. Took it to ESS right down the street. They couldn't solve it. And their McLaren retired techs that opened up their own shop. I'm like, fuck, they can't solve it either? I took it to McLaren. They couldn't solve it. McLaren couldn't solve it. They're like, we we can't figure it out. So now I'm sitting here going, motherfucker, dude, <laughs> what's the problem? Five months in the dark. And then randomly I get a call, your car's f- fixed. And when I tell you, I lost my voice <laughs> when I, I, was, I yelled at the top of my lungs. I put $110,000 down, I put $60,000 in modifications. It's my first like cool car, you know, yeah. and I'm like super excited. And then here, there were times I even forgot that I had the damn car. <laughs> Swarting, sort of, I was like, oh yeah, I have a seven fucking 720. I'd see it on the 40, 405, like that thing's coming. Fuck, I have one. That shit's bad. <laughs> and finally, I got the car back. Knock on wood, so far, everything's good. The problem, I guess, was a connector or so, something that mm-hmm. took forever to solve, which is honestly, I don't want to say shit, but right. whack. Whatever, car's back, runs good. Two days after I bought it, I, I, for, the, for those two days, the two days after I bought or I got the car back, I beat the fucking shit out of it to make sure everything's good because I was driving up to SAC. Right. And so I mobbed up to SAC. I don't want to do the whole drive up there. So much fun, dude. I advise if you have a supercar or a sports car, please don't save the miles. Enjoy the damn car. Mm-hmm. Put it to use. If you can't afford the miles, don't buy the damn car. Buy something right. a little Absolutely. bit less yep. that you can drive the shit out of and enjoy your damn car. Yep. No weekend warriors. No weekend no warriors. Weekend warriors. I damn you, this motherfucker, Absolutely bro. No. Every, I have the years. Fuck the years. I drive that thing every damn day. <laughs> yeah. Now, literally. Let me ask you this. You were talking about the 720S being probably, arguably, the most value based, yeah. best supercar. Hmm. Now, my thing is, every time I'm looking at McLarens and I'm seeing what they go for on the secondary. Yep. The depreciation on those motherfuckers Ridiculous. are oh, insane. Crazy. Yeah. Why do you guys think that the depreciation comes at such a big to play? Do you think it's because how service or in reliability yeah. they reliability, are? Reliability, um, their reputation on that, and also they make a lot of McLarens as well. A fuck you time. know, they, there's a lot of them on the market as well. So, you know, people don't value them the same as the same status. I mean, fucking uh, Ferrari and Lamborghini have been around forever. You know, Literally. I also think they make so many models that like it kind of makes it dilutes less it. special. It, it dilutes, dilutes it, it as well. Um, but that doesn't take away from the fact that they're still great driver's cars. They still look really good and they're fast as fuck. And so you can pick up a fucking 720S for like 220, 230, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. Right now, yeah, literally. Like 20, it's I think, yeah, 2020 and, and even new, you can you even drop still size. Like 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 Huracons, exactly. 10, 12 Gs, you're pushing eight bro, to the yeah. wheel. And Huracons are around that 200, uh, 200 like five range. Eight. Literally, yeah. Literally. And you're getting 600 horsepower, you know, and it's like you get so, doors don't go up. But, but you literally. get doors go up. <laughs> but you know what I would take, though, to be honest with you? What? Between the Huracan and the 7? Huracan. I mean, bro, yeah. Absolutely, The bro. V10 V10 sound is like... I didn't get one because my brother had a 2022 yeah. Hur... Hur... can't say it. Huracan. <laughs> that he beat the shit out of. He put, yes. Yeah, th- there you fucking go. He had a 2022 Huracan Evo. He specced it out. He put 14,000 miles on it in a year. He and I beat the fucking shit out of that car. Not one issue. Not yeah. one issue, and they're the rel- and they're relatively. I mean, now a twenty two right now, with, depending on the mileage, won't be the same exact price as seven twenty s. Yeah, but like if you get someone that's right, that's touching that range, you right? Get a twenty two. They're able to do that twenty, that, let's say two twenty to yeah. two fifty range. Yep. Mm-hmm. You can either get an Evo on the higher two fifty mm-hmm. side, yep. or you can get a seven twenty s on that lower two twenty side. And this is their first supercar. I go Evo. You go uh, Evo. Let me I, hear it. Okay, so I feel you want to say the McLaren. So so no no no. So first supercar, I would say. The Huracan makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah. such a good experience of a car. Uh, it's a it's bold safe. statement. Yeah, but when you want to go into a more driver focus and you really like, you really want to appreciate a driving experience of a car. I think that's when you want to trade it and go for McLaren because that is a different, different experience. I'm not gonna lie, th- this is the only car that I'm not used to the speed. 
Yeah, it's it is scary. scary. Oh, fucking fast. Bro, y'all gonna make me get a McLaren, bro. I can't it believe this. I'll sell you this one. It's good shit, now. Bro. I'll sell it to you. Actually, bro, my McLaren. Homie's just talking about five months down. He's like, no, bro, just take it off my head. Dude, I swear to God, this is the only car that the power, I never get used to the power. Yeah. Every every other car, oh, bro, that 911, I'll fucking be fucking knee on the steering wheel, we don't give texting, shit. launch control at the light, boom, yeah. go. It's easy, easy. This thing, scary. His, his well, shit is the fastest car I've ever driven. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 I've driven 75. a lot of fucking cars, yeah. homie. His shit is quick. But you're selling it. Nasty. Yeah, I'm selling it because I want to get into a Ferrari. I want to try something out. You yeah. know? Because I'm, I'm, the thing about me is like, I don't have a lot of attachment to cars. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm okay with like letting things go and because I want to basically experience them all. There's yeah. so many different, yeah. these are toys to me. You know? So it's like, I want to be able. It, I want to be able to experience different brands, different cars. Worst case scenario, I can go back to the cars I really love and mm. just keep those, mm, right? Yeah. So, and they, I could always just go back and get a mm-hmm. McLaren, you know. So, so you want to move into a Ferrari? I want to, yeah. Move With into a Ferrari. specifically, you got you got your eyes set on something. So I got a couple of options at the moment. They've right changed now. recently, no? I they feel did like they change. Just so, recently, just yes, changed. it just recently changed because <laughs> I was really set on a Pista, and I was against it. And he's really against you're against it. the Pista. I can't wait to hear it. It's this. a yeah. beautiful car. Don't get me wrong. Great it's car, beautiful. but I think performance wise, it, it it doesn't do as well as the 765, but the, the value too. wise, they hold so much more mm. value. They're more <laughs> expensive. Um, but uh the Pista and the A12 GTS are like kind of the two that I'm kind of in between. you right wait, those are your you're deciding between those two? Yeah. Bro, you're crazy. What do you mean? What do you mean? A12. What do you mean? Thank you. Oh, like, yeah, not, okay. Not even a Thank fucking brainer. <laughs> I thought you, you meant like, you're like, oh, well, I like this one, but this one, bro. If those, if those are the decisions, fuck the 48. Let's yeah. get yeah. the A12. Straight bro. pipe Absolutely. A12 all day. Oh, okay. GTS too? Top I've down. never driven an A12. Uh, yeah. But I've only heard that those things are the fucking most ridiculous car that Ferrari makes. Maybe even the most ridiculous car, even besides maybe the SF90. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What makes you want to pick between those two? And even what makes you even hold on to the 48? Have you driven? So, have you driven? I've driven one? both. Both? I've driven both, right? So the Pista is because it's a better investment. The A12s well, are going yeah. down a lot in the true, market right true. now. True. They are go- going down. I have a feeling they're going to continue going down. So I don't want to be in the position where like I buy it and it keeps going down, yeah. right? Pistas are bulletproof right now. We Pistas don't make bad financial bulletproof. decisions here, baby. Yeah. Never. So I-, I still like to be as smart with my money as possible. <laughs> I still like to be as smart as my money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, like, you know, I didn't lose money when I sold the Porsche. I'm not going to lose money when I sold my McLaren as well. So I want to still make good financial decisions, but I also want the car that I really like. Yeah. Pisas, I think, look better than A12s, in my opinion. I think so. Um, right? Yeah. You, you agree? So. They, they look Pista better. Pista looks better than A12. I think yeah. it looks better than A12. The B- well, the structuring of the car, like the engineering kind of plays into yes. that, bro. I, that yeah. part I do understand, bro. And that like the stripe right. that goes down through that, that opening right there, it, yeah. I think it's just beautiful. amazing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And so that's why I really like that car. It's very iconic as well. But the 812 as well, when that spec that I sent you, oh. that black one, well, black on, I was like, bro, buy this bitch. Oh triple black, God. red interior? It's a black, red interior, and it's like on, it's lowered too. It looks so fucking good. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, that's a beautiful, beautiful car. And it's NA. Like, that's a spec that's that true. will never that V12 go out of style. Is ridiculous. Right. So V12 is crazy, reliable as well. Um, I've heard turbo issues around the 488 as well. So it's like, I don't know. But the value of those won't hold as well as a piece of. So it's like, I'm in a battle between like, do I care more about the value or do I care more about like, the uh, reliability or like the sound of it and stuff like that and uh, so kind of in between those two do you make the responsible decision or do you make the fucking decision yeah you're like which what where are we at right now is that saying exactly i don't know like right now, the thing is i'm not in a rush to buy anything right? that's yeah. the beauty I, of first off i need to sell my mclaren uh that's the first thing so once i sell that then i'm like i'm, I'm a free agent i can kind of get whatever so that is for want. sale then your seven it is for sale yes, yes is yes, it yes. just is it going to be end up somewhere or are you just listing it up or what exactly you plan your plans with that or I, how are you going to take have someone take that off your hands I'm open wire, to it. 500K. I, yeah. Wire, 500K. Wire, wire. I was like, yeah. It's like, wire. I was I open was to trade as well, but I'm probably wire. open to, to just wires. Just and wires like and everything yeah. in between. I'll make you payments for the next 27 years. 27 <laughs> years. We'll structure like a 30 year fix. Fuck <laughs> this guy. Something like that on no the chance. No chance. I'm actually going to sell that thing and, uh, in summertime. Yeah. Yeah. What time out like that? Something. Yeah. Like I've had my fun with the car and now I want to move on to different things. The car that I'm still having a lot of fun with, which is why I still keep it, is the SVJ. I still have so much fun in that car. You can't beat that. It's Bro, you, nothing's gonna beat that. Literally, yeah. I, I would love to hear a lot more about like your only experience with this because I'm I'm telling you from just legitimate like when I was a child, bro. Like that is my dream car, bro. That mm. still is today. Yeah. Like yeah. what mine do? Literally, I've been <laughs> <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah, let me. That's what I would love. Like if I had to pick my ultimate goal, maybe my mindset is a little low right now. Yeah. But if I had to pick one thing, fuck Porsche, fuck McLaren, fuck everything in between, that thing. Mm-hmm. The SVJ is. 
an experienced car. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It takes so much fucking energy to oh drive that God. car. He it's fucking like, knows. He took it out for let me tell, how, how let long did you have let it? Let me for? tell the damn story. The day I did the exhaust on this car, I drove it back to him. It's on my IG actually. I was he was driving my 720. And no, were you driving or were you yeah, shooting? Yeah, 70, yeah, you were on the 720. 720. Yeah. Our boy was in the passenger seat recording, and I'm in this thing just cutting up in the 720s like this. I'm just cutting up through traffic. It's a sick ass shot. 30 minutes from OC to Corona at that time, I literally handed it. He said, Fuck this thing, dude. <laughs> it, yeah. It, and this is my favorite fucking car. Yeah. My dream car. I love yeah. this thing, but it drains you. Bro, imagine I drove that shit all the way from OC yeah, I don't know how you to that. Monterey. Monterey, bro. And, like we were going through canyons. And we were, we were smashing. Smashing. seven we were, hours, we nine, nine, hustling, ten hours. Bro, we were hauling ass, like, bro. Hauling trying fucking to get ass. drained. If that's yeah, what yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Drain the is, fuck out of me. It bro. takes so much energy because of the, the first off, the gear shifts are brutal. Single clutch transmission. Yeah. You have all of this loud noise. It rattles as a motherfucker as well. And it's a big fucking car. Mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it, when you steer that car, it's like you're steering a fucking big ass okay. metal machine. Yeah. The yeah. other half of it too is how people react when they see it. Yep. Yeah. Oh bro, my we're on the God. freeway. Bro, yeah. Absolutely, bro. bro. Kids come in, hanging out of the Fuck window. Sun moving. Moving. Phones yep. up bro, the sun. People don't even know what it crashing. is. And yeah. they're probably like, it's yeah. something. I don't yeah. know what the it's fuck such it is, a but show it's People start swerving over to you, not realizing that they're yeah. swerving because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just the staring time, at you. So, like, all the time. So my thing was, I was going to buy this next. Mm -hmm. I'm still contemplating you should. it. Buy, buy you this should. one or a 7 no, no, SVJ? No, no. SV, 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 SVJ. Okay. So maybe, maybe like, this summer. SVJ is summer? Yeah, for sure. Well, that's that was my thought. was between SVJ and the SV. But then I always remember driving this thing. And it. And the thing about me is I'm dealing this thing. And right. I mean, we, daily, daily. You're trying to put yeah. miles. Yeah. I'm trying talking miles daily, on daily. Fucking. I'm talking like two, three, four thousand miles a month. I'm talking like I take it to work, to my mom's, to Ralph's, to the beach, <laughs> to wherever. Like I'm driving the SVJ every fucking day. But then I think about when I drove it that yeah. day, and I was like, "Fuck, this shit it, it means <laughs> it's it's an bro!" Like, yeah, you gotta and be an automotive adds, masochist, you know? Yeah, I'm sorry, you gotta be an automotive masochist. It is, yeah. yeah. And what you adds more to Bless it is. You. Uh, this is a little word right there. Sorry. Yeah, that's a great word. Sorry. But the other thing about this thing is it's a roadster too. Yeah. So you take the top off, you're fucking experiencing everything, everything. And he's the one who convinced me to actually just go for the roadster instead of just the coupe. Um, so I just went for the fucking top of the line SVJ as much as I could. And when you have the top down, that's even more energy. You feel everything with that shit, bro. How loud it is, the banging the gears. And it's a show car and it's a, it's a experience of a car. Um, I don't think it's a, a driver's car. Um, I, I think it's just more for like fun and show. The presence. The presence of yeah. it. Yeah. Right. But if that you want a driver's car, soul. exactly. And that's why, and nothing's been able to beat that experience or give any other similar experience. So that's why like SVJ stays. So I actually remember the day KP uh, told me he was considering buying the SVJ. And I remember we were on FaceTime and I was like, bro, what the? He's like, bro, I'm going to put an offer on the car. I was like, dude, that's going to be fucking nuts. Next day, he FaceTimes me and I'm on the 241. I'll never forget this day, dog. Yeah. Fucking FaceTimes me. I'm going down, sorry, 133, right before Irvine Boulevard. He f FaceTimes me. He goes, bro, I got approved. <laughs> what was my reaction? <laughs> bro, you stopped the fucking car. I pulled, you literally I pulled pull over, over and stopped the fucking car. I pulled over and I lost my shit. I'm like, my fucking dog's getting an ass me fucking J, dude. Yeah, I was so Fuck fucking yeah. happy for him. And I still am happy for him. And I like, I, I almost like, because we like talked about it, talked. He's like, bro, oh, I don't know, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then you got approved for it. And I was like, dude, this, I'm so happy for you. And here it is now. It's fucking mm -hmm. awesome. And it's been a great car. I don't it makes know a great background. That's for sure. Bro, hell yeah. You kidding me? <laughs> Motherfucker. That shit is insanity. I don't know about y'all. But for me, whips and everything in between, I always use as like a motivational thing. Absolutely. Where like it continues to drive me to whatever I am that I'm pushing next to. Absolutely. For this, when you bought this and you were able to actually acquire it and you fucking got approved and you got that feeling inside of you, how much benefit do you think you've gained, not from the ownership and driving experience, but like the feeling you got to push forward into all this shit mm. you've been able to accomplish after that? I'll tell you what, the car note on this fucking car is not cheap at all, all right? So <laughs> you have, it's a mortgage. Bro. That was, that's you a, have a mortgage no, more than a mortgage. Yeah. That's more yeah. mortgage. I literally, I have no choice that's a but Cali to mortgage. have to make money. I have literally. to make money because if I want to keep that yep. and afford that, yep. I have to be able to find ways yep. to keep making my money and everything and keep my business alive, keep reinvesting my money back into my businesses and making sure that it's all good to go, you know? So it's not just the personal gain out of it for sure, but it is like, like something you have to think about in the back of your head. Like yeah. I, this is this is part of my monthly payments. I really got to make sure I can still afford this. So it does push you in 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 more than just like um 
the the feeling the joy that you get out of it but business wise uh, um, and personally as well it, it, it definitely drives a, a huge force in my life yeah. even i feel like connections as well like you drive that car oh, yeah granted obviously other vehicles and others should do adds validity to what you do and stuff like that but right. like you pull up in that and you start talking about whatever you are, is that you're talking about, whatever you got going on, mm -hmm. it adds a certain amount of validity. And then all of a sudden people want to connect with you, mm -hmm. go here, be able to do right. this. That thing has value far beyond anything Absolutely. you can get personally. I've met well. so many cool people because of the SVJ. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a whole stigma. It's like, oh, people only like you because of the car or whatever. But it's like, I think that's narrow minded. Mm -hmm. I think Absolutely. you're seeing it from one dimension when it's like, you can't, it's not just somebody else taking advantage of what you have, but you take advantage of what they have as well. And it's an exchange mm -hmm. of value. It's transactional. Really? And that's okay. Yeah. Exchange of value. Because if I'm right? winning and they're winning, that's all that matters, mm -hmm. right? And it's like people are narrow-minded when they make that type of content. Comment. And it's like, I see a bigger picture in this. Yeah, I literally. see a way bigger picture in this. I see a lot of benefit for me as well. So. It just helps you present a lot more value exactly. in that transaction, which means on the other side, they have to kind of reciprocate right. a similar value. Exactly. And you never know what kind of really, really cool people you meet out of it that become very essential parts of your life, you know? So it's, it's on that baby's done a lot of good things for me. I can only imagine. Do you have any future plans? Has Navarra got any plans more with this thing? Are we done modding it? Are we thinking um, about maybe doing more things? I think to my understanding, I mean, you can speak on your car, but I was telling him, <laughs> let's wrap it in yeah. his drink thing, whatever he's. Uh, yeah. So I have an energy drink company coming out. Um, it's going to be launched around like February. Uh, and when I, that launches maybe i'll wrap the car that's probably the only thing everything else is fucking done there's not much like, else to do yeah. to the you can't really this thing's fucking perfect yeah it, <laughs> it, i think yeah. the svj is a very easy black, car to like modify because like you just have exhausting wheels and that's it hell honestly the stock wheels are fine you could just keep the stock wheels and just do exhaust and you're Literally. fine but i obviously went to do a little bit more but there's not a lot you need to do to that car so mm -hmm. um i think wrap in the future but I'm, i am gonna if i do that but there's there isn't even like much to do to this car. Yeah. This it's car's done. Sort of yeah, exactly. My car, yeah, out, you, you do the whole kit, the whole shebang. Yeah. Yours, I'm doing the whole wide body thing and all that stuff. Yeah. This in sixteen, done. yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to be here in like two weeks. But this car really just needs exhaust, wheels, lowering. That's it. Everything yeah. else is pretty much extra. So how yeah. far are we away from uh, Koenigsegg? Mm. Oh <laughs> man, that is still a mission. Because what are we talking about? Koenigseggs or Regeras are like three million right now, or something like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, even yeah. if I traded, even if, you your hands on one type even if I traded, if you're my, willing to wait three years, yeah, yeah. right, all right, right. Even if I fucking traded my SVJ calling in and my seven six five, that's still a fucking push. That's right. not right. making right. it right now. Yeah, that's I like the you. that's the deposit. Yeah, I don't that's think people understand the discrepancy. The there's levels. a lot of they discrepancies. Yeah. It's wild, huh? Bro, like even think of the levels. Like, okay, for example, like think about the levels that like sitting here. You have an SVJ, right? Okay, I got a four five eight. I've got even, a four C. Even yeah. those those levels, bro, are immaculate. And then yeah. you talk about the scale of SVJ to a fucking Koenigsegg. Like people don't even can't even fathom. More garage with multiple Pagani yeah. and Koenigseggs. There, there's, oh, here's the hard thing about the SVJ is that you have to jump into hypercar after that. Mm -hmm. There's no other car in the <laughs> super in the supercar level that will get up to. That. And when you do, it's a huge fucking leap. You go from 800k to million. E just millions quickly. yeah millions m's oh, that's all that there is that that like svj is the the best you can get as far as supercar and there's like it that's why it's such a hard jump and it takes longer to make that jump because it gets into the millions and then it gets really fucking expensive crazy yeah. you agree with that statement that he said 100 percent. svj is the top top supercar top of the top top, top of the top. top well it's the top for me i respect the top it. for this guy right here for me yes what let me ask you this this might be maybe a really good fucking question what defines a supercar? Oh, here we go. Here we what, go. Oh, what is the language? Good what are we giving the actual descriptive definition of a supercar? Because I, I have multiple heard, ways to see it. I fucking heard everything in the book. I think one description would be it's a poster car. Okay. That's poster car. One side of seeing things. No one ever put a no kid right now that's five years old has a Tesla Model S mm -hmm. plaid on his wall. <laughs> I don't Very care how true. fast that thing is. I don't care. Yeah, it's stupid fast, ridiculous, but nobody has it on the wall. And if you do, that's weird. There's question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Probably, yeah, someone's got an R34 vegan. on their wall. <laughs> what? Someone's got like an R34 on their true. wall. True. Yeah. true. True, true, true. I also think it boils down to performance, yep. rarity. You know, is a 911 Turbo a supercar? Some may say yes, some may say no. I'm a 911 Turbo fanboy. I still think it's kind of half and half. Yeah. I mean, is right. a GT3 RS considered a supercar? Yeah. I mean, that's it looks like too. one now. Yeah, it looks like one now for sure. But it's still like, honestly, that car is also still on the border of it as well. 
GT3 um, R- RS? RS, yeah. yeah. Uh, GT3, I don't think it's a supercar. But R8, for sure, it's a supercar. So then what's the difference between a supercar and an exotic? I think that's in the same league. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same league. Yeah. I think yeah. exotic just like exotic it encompasses yeah. more. Because then you get like that's a Rolls Royce would still be an exotic, I would think. Yeah. To me, exotic is anything that's not American. Exactly. Just that's foreign. 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 Yeah. foreign. And, ex- be foreign. and lug- like expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Anything like above. A fiat's not an Anything exotic. above 200, I would say. Yeah. It, yeah. The, the price matters. So the price of the car. Yeah, true. The performance of the car, the rarity of the car, brand as well matters as well. The branding. So the brand. There it is. That's right? why because I like the branding. Matters. Matters. Brand matters yeah. as well because like a for, anything you buy from Ferrari or Lamborghini is automatically a supercar. That's already like this. That's a supercar manufacturer. Same thing with McLaren, right? What about so an Urus are, though? Supercar? Urus is, yeah. It's yeah. a super SUV, like whatever. Like it's mm, still it's a high something. performance. It's, yeah, all, yeah. it's a new category. category. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, as long as, of course, those brands uphold the- Is it a the, supercar? I would say no. The yeah. Earth? I would say it's its own thing. But what That's about the Perth Zangway? You got to exactly. naturally ask for it. Like, they sidestepped. And now yeah. everyone's doing this whole super, like you said, a super, super SUV. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I think SUV. Lambo created yeah. that own exactly. Either way, it's yeah. like an exotic. It is still an exotic. It's for sure an exotic. Right? Yeah. So, and as long as these brands uphold these certain type of uh, performance and values of these cars, then they will, uh, if they came out with something like 30 grand, then that's not going to be a fucking exotic or supercar at that point. So, they still have to maintain price and they still have to maintain performance maintain performance so brand price and performance matters maserati gran turismo supercar fuck no no no, no. no bro are you kidding me <laughs> Those are, First the off, trophy the these days are like 230 I grand too car. Yeah, the bro, fastest you drive appreciation the lot, this on the 110 i hate that car so much. six miles on it bro, bro give these for 18 grand 17 that's grand, crazy. 14 grand. that's, that's wild crazy. but then you get like an r8 and even though it's not that expensive a mid-engine V10 naturally aspirated, you, it's kind of hard to argue against it being a supercar yeah, at that yeah, point, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's where you add that little entry-level supercar. Right? You want to go there? He would. You want to go would, there? I know what he would I mean, say. I don't know what it is, to be honest with you. Bro, to be honest with you, bro, like, and again, we even made a meme about it, joking, because we were at South OC Cars and Coffee yeah. mm-hmm. last week, and mm-hmm. we were pulling in. He was in the, the 458. I'm in the Z06. And I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, Z06 is nothing out of this fucking world. It's pretty crazy. Most people don't know. It's a 5.5 liter flat plane crank, supposedly the most, again, the most powerful naturally aspirated motor they ever made. V8. Six, V8. 670 horsepower. It's ridiculous. I'm pulling in and like I'm trying to go into like the first lane, like oh, exotic no, road. No, yeah. Like, no. And homies, homies like, and I'm like tripping. I'm like, okay, maybe it's he's it's full, whatever. Push the next lane. I look at my rear view and they're t- they're like waving his ass in. They're like, oh, let's dang. go, let's go. And I like fucking on the brake, roll my window down. I'm like, yo, we're all together. And he's like, I can't let a Corvette in here. Mm-hmm. And I go, I wasn't again. By no means am I trying to be like, this is my shit, whatever in between. But I was like, you, this is a Z06, not like a base C8 type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, no, nah, bro, it's American. Keep pushing. Damn. Yeah. And I was like, damn. Yeah. So then I go comparatively, I'm thinking of like what they let in. Like, for example, my 458 compared to the Z06. They're two different worlds. Price point around maybe a little the same. I think Z06 because of markup, they're yep. a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But Z06 will outperform the shit out of that 458. Yeah. Time, like literally eight days well, there was a 2010 shit. california in there they let a california yeah. in there, yeah. bro. but that's the thing that's why brand <laughs> matters because right. right. brand, matter. right. brand does matter i would have been so salty yeah, dude let me ask you this too or at least what i think is happening too corvette they've completely done a rebrand yeah they've changed the engineering of the car they know that they couldn't put more power down or couldn't make it more effective with their setup right mm-hmm. so now they're changing the way that the car is completely engineered okay but that corvette branding when you see the insignia what do you think of chevy Chevy, Chevy. And then what do you think of the type of person that drives that the car? The old white, retired, yep. 60 year old, old man, white guy, air monarchs, everything in between. Yep. Yep. They cannot, no matter, and this is my whole thing with Chevy. You got the again, Christian monarchs on right now. Literally, exactly. <laughs> I got the fucking, I got the CDs on. Yeah. But when you think of Corvette, you immediately think of that type of person. Mm-hmm. So no matter what they do with the car, the moniker doesn't match the performance That's of the right. car. So until Corvette can change that branding, they will never be able to push into the supercar well, realm. How to that change sixty years? You can. Yeah, that's you the can. Branding. You got to hit me up, get a sponsorship deal going, and I'll start pushing the Z06. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that yeah, exactly. Because, like, not even again. This is a whole different topic and imagery and shit like that. But you look at a person like talk about like let's talk about like money to be example. Money, in my opinion, is an amplifier of something. Right? You're a good person. You have an abundance of wealth. You're just going to be an abundance of who you naturally are. Right? Mm-hmm. right. Like I can already tell you're a very giving person. So when you have an abundance, I can already tell you're talking about giving away cars, helping out others, expanding and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. When you think about the people who drive these cars, right? You think about the Corvette Insignia, you think about that old man, right? Mm -hmm. They got to do a complete rebrand, bro. Like you talk about, you guys know, like, and I don't, I hate to quote this and I don't mean to go there, but like you guys heard Tate's story about how he got his Bugatti. 
Why do you hate that? Oh, I just want to make sure. I'm just Anybody prefacing. Hates Tate. Get I'm a fucking here. disclaimer. That's all it is. That's yeah, all I'm Tate. saying. Yeah, yeah. He talks about like how he got Bugatti to actually sell him one. Yeah. He tells everybody, he's like, all right, every single Bugatti you see out there is in some showroom or some collection collecting dust. Mm -hmm. You get nice content, nice video and shit like that, but it's just sitting there. It's mm -hmm. not doing anything for the moniker. He went to them and he was like, I will get it and I will absolutely push the shit of it like you do. I will drive the fuck out of the car for what it's meant to be, mm -hmm. pushing it in a whole different direction. So now when you kind of think about Bugatti, for me at least, I think of fucking that bronze uh, mm -hmm. Chiron that he yep, has, same, right? Yeah, same. Exactly. Yep. And then you think about who he is, so now you correlate the Bugatti brand to him. Yep. It changed the narrative. It yep. Completely. Mm -hmm. Corvette, they got to do the same shit. You talk about, think about the motherfuckers that are driving SBJs, McLarens, Urises, right? When they get out, Maybe some tats. They got everything in between. Some swagger. You get out of a Corvette. You think old white dude. His yep. cargo shorts looking like this. Did you ever see how Dodge separated Ram? Yeah. And they made it two different brands. Exactly. Two lanes. Then That's what ended up happening. What, what they should have done with Chevy and Corvette. Because mm -hmm. now you have all the Dodge lane. They, bro, they even make Dodge merch that mm -hmm. goes crazy to try to match the Demons mm -hmm. and Hellcats. Mm -hmm. yeah. All those 400 uh, Dodge credit score homies it. and stuff like yeah. that. that we I hate the damn cars, but they're killing it. Same, bro. They, they, yeah. got, they know their lane. They know. They I used to have a motor and everything. Like, they, they literally dropped the But now with that everything. being gone, where are they going to go? I don't know, bro. I don't know where they're going to get people to pay 1100 bucks a month for a fucking $70,000. <laughs> Which is crazy. I don't know what the fuck they're doing there, bro. What about the 4GT? You got a You got a V6 from ford I, do, I have don't zero opinions on that on that, on that car yeah, don't i don't even okay ford that. gt is a great looking car in my opinion um uh i think i said i quoted one time that it was uh so it, it's getting like hyper car pricing but it's supercar performance which is kind of what puts it in a weird spot mm -hmm. um it's kind of an awkward spot me, uh, but 1.4 million dollars for that, is yeah. Bro, I, think a V6, bro, I don't give a trip. fuck what it is, bro. I'm not trip. paying a 1.4 for a V6. I don't pay 1.4 for trip. a Ford, homie. For a Ford, uh, that <laughs> goes back to branding. That goes no, back you to branding. a million dollars yeah. on a, I get a Senna for 9.99.99, literally, bro. Yeah. Like a million bucks. You exactly, got a bro. track weapon, badass literally. McLaren. Yeah. And I hate McLaren, and I have one. I don't give a shit. I'd still get that over a damn Ford. But a yeah, Ford GT looks good, though. The new ones, they look insane. But now, simultaneously, though, it also depends on what tax bracket you're yeah in too. absolutely uh -huh. like for example yeah. his business partner he has svj sf90 this this that blah blah for him buying that car whatever it's just one extra car but if it's someone like me who has one of these and one of you know that if that's my main saturday which i don't have that but like saturday car i'm not spending that much on that car yeah. if i have like 11 cars that's my 12th car fine but hell no, I wouldn't do it. That makes sense. Yeah. It's a collector car. Yeah. I break it down to like, all right, you spend 1.4, but a girl asks you like, hey, what car you drive? Ford GT. You still drive a Ford. Ford. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, she's taking yeah, pictures of the car. What, that's going to say Ford. It's going to say Ford. Oh, like, same yeah. thing uh, what I say about the always about the Nissan GTR. Yeah, everything's about the Nissan GTRs though. Like, yeah, it's fast, whatever, but... A girl asks you, hey, what car you drive? Oh, I drive a Nissan. Drive a Nissan. I'm telling you, bro. Don't get me started on the GTR. That's the biggest hunk of shit. Bro, GTRs are, in my opinion, bro, dog shit. My, it's horrible. very fast. Some people to drive, to go to war for I don't oh, yeah. care. I, sure. Dude, it fucking, looks... Some people it, are ready I, to go to war for sure. The interior is like an Ultima on roids. Literally, bro. In 2009 yeah. Ultima. Yeah. Not yeah. even like updated It's a Ultima fast car. I'll like give that, it bro. that for sure. Badass car. If you do it right, it's tunable beyond belief. Beyond belief. You can get it to be mm -hmm. stupid fast. It's great. But it's fucking geese on. Granted, granted, I love the R34. Don't get me wrong. R34 is I love it. it. But that has storyline. It has storyline, story nostalgia. Line, following yeah. and shit like that, exactly. bro. That rolled over to the R35. And then again, going back to what you're talking about modification-wise and shit like that, people know, like, for example, that motor where you can do with boost and you can really push that motherfucker. Yeah. It has its lane and it's cool. But yeah. they've taken that way far beyond and now they tailor it to the actual fucking imaging of the car yeah. and like what the car stands for. And they boost it into this fucking, like, I guess, supercar range, like almost if it would be a supercar. Well, the zero is on GT on it. It's 2.9, yeah. right? It's I mean, fast as hell. Nissan GTR, in my is opinion. It is that fast as hell? You know, base C8 does 292. Not a supercar. GTR, so not a supercar. To me, if you're going no, under sports car. 3 sports it's, car, yeah. it's, it's the top two I, I respect car. it. Yeah. Trust me, that fucking, I respect like a I think now shit's getting crazy. 2.4, 2.5. I know. Yeah, wow, the, the performance are insane, oh, shit. man. Yeah, bro, Tesla's going to do under, under two seconds right I don't now, care if Tesla goes here to 60 in 1.2 seconds. Let her on fire. Under one's very, very soon, Driving to a wall. Going so. back to touch back on kind of like where we're at in Navarre and stuff like that. I've been meaning to ask you this this whole time. Yes. What are, since you guys do get heavy into the modification side of things, what are some of the craziest experiences you've had with some modifications in terms of maybe I'm asking this from like a shop owner perspective, okay. 
let's say, for example, you have a guy doing a specific job on a 720S. Yes. Have you ever had a bad experience where something like, let's say, a user error or a, like a human error on a car where it's caused you to have like some type of crazy experience? Knock on wood, no, thank God. Because we hear, my thing is this, my mantra is if I own a car, I'm driving the motherfucker. I'm beating the shit out of it. Whatever we build here, me, my brother, Eric, who owns Voodoo, our mantra is reliability over performance. Performance comes second. Reliability first. You can have a 1,500 horsepower car if the damn thing don't move. Who gives a shit? Exactly. Right? right? So for us, our parts, everything that we do, we stay within the limits. Like, for example, if you want to come to me and twin turbo your R8, your whatever, we'll do it. No problem. We're not pushing more than 800 to the wheels, period. If you want to go push 2,000, go to UGR. They're the kings of that. They've been in the scene for 20 fucking years. They know the game. They're, they're those guys that they, they know how to build. Because then you start to build everything mm -hmm. else. Yeah, you got to rebuild everything. Clutches, yeah. baskets, internals, rods, blah, 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 blah. Cool. So for us, whatever we do here, everything's safe. He's yep. a prime example of well, that. Uh, yeah, if I could talk yeah, about that, the the my seven six five LT. You could. We have a homie that has like fifteen hundred horsepower. On fourteen hundred right? horsepower. 14, yeah, I could easily fucking crank that all the way up. But I made it very clear, and they were with me on this as well. Push it as far as you can naturally push it to keep it healthy. And that seven six five that you're saying, he hated it so much because it kept breaking down that he it sold it. Piece of ours, yeah. Yeah, it was just sitting half the time. Yeah, couldn't yep. even use it. Yep. Even but use I, it. for me, I can daily drive. But the every shit out of that every one. other shot, yeah, we'll push fourteen hundred. Why? For <laughs> what? I don't understand. They don't, like, I love speed, bro. Yesterday, swear, love. yeah, sorry. No, 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 you're good. You're good. You're good. Finish. I want to hear. Yesterday, I, I was thinking, I I want a fifteen hundred horsepower fucking car, but it's also going to cost astronomical amount to get it to where I need it to be. I need to build the entire trans up first, then the. The more I've read, you say something. I'm not transmission, build the transmission. <laughs> I need to do all those, all those things. And if I don't want to drop 40, 50 grand to build a transmission, I'm not going to, right? So all these other shops say, yeah, we'll push 2,000 horsepower, but they don't touch the rest of the car. Well, it says something about them. It says something about them. It just kind of shows that you guys have a respect and you guys care about your clients. Absolutely, day, bro. Absolutely. That's why I fuck with them every exactly, time. Exactly, bro. You, you. You, have, you run a business and you have a business model scaled to, again, you value your clients because at the end of the day, bro, without your clients, yeah. there's You're no nothing. business. There's You're no nothing. business to be done. You're nothing. So yeah. you can have these shops that are like, give me what I want. And they don't, they're like, all right, the customer asked for it. We're going to make it happen. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, bro, you want to have that repertoire and that continued reliability where you get a client like this and all of a sudden he's got the four craziest whips you can even, even imagine. And then we're just running it and keeping it going. There are shops going. out there right now. And I'm not going to say any na names, but you can go out there and you know see that their you if you want, reputations are starting to, well, I, I don't even know what, what you said. And I don't want to say anything. <laughs> so I don't want to know. I don't, I don't know what he just said. So I don't want to know. He's like, like okay. send it. Send but, it. No, cause I don't, I don't want to be knowing that he's talking shit, but no, no, there no, are shops sure. out there that their names are slowly declining because they're just sending it, you know? And it's like, Dude, if there's anybody that likes speed, it's me. I took that thing to 202 with him, actually, and I loved it. And I floored this car everywhere. I love speed. Where did you guys do that at? Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking, I was like, where the fuck is there room? Uh, shit like in that? Mexico? I was going to say, in Mexico? geotag Tijuana. Mexico, baby. There's Mexico. a 15 freeway in Tijuana, right? Absolutely. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I was in the Huracan yeah. at that time, and this man was going. I was going. It's actually going. on video. Yeah, yeah, he has a video of it. It's yeah, pretty yeah. fucking crazy. But I love speed, but I, I also, literally, but I, I also want my car to work. Yeah. yeah. So so to go back to your question, so far, thank God, knock on wood, nothing's happened. We, we, we And also, we educate them too. We sit down right there, and we like chit-chat and talk. This is why you're doing this, and this is why you're doing that, and this is what this does, and the tune does this, and this does blah, blah, blah. So it's not just like, and I think that, that, that also plays into our shop's success to every single client has said to us, I'm so almost proud to say this, that my brother and I, this is not, I don't know how to say this. We don't do this for the money. Hence, we haven't taken anything out. Obviously, money is a byproduct and eventually we'll start to pull out, right? But the sheer enjoyment that we get from helping dudes build their cars up and guys come in here and they, hey, I want to do this. I want to do that. Or the fucking story of the dude that started with nothing and now he has this and he's going to build up his car and they come to us 
you know, it's just such a cool feeling. And we like sit with them and talk mm -hmm. with them. And we shoot them texts. We like converse. It's not like most shops. Okay, here's the card. Here's the keys. I will call you in two weeks. No, yeah. fuck that, bro. Like, let's fucking chat about it. Like, let's do what you want to do with guidance too. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? You really love this stuff. I love it. I love yeah. it. Because yeah. I'm like a genuine car guy, bro. Yeah, like, awesome. there, there's nothing else. I don't care about clothes. It's the same shit. I wear the same shit every damn day. I, I don't buy anything fancy dancy. You know, it, for me, everything's cars. It's bizarre. It's weird. You know, what's it's crazy is, um, uh, you know, uh, I used to look at supercars all the time and, you know, not only just imagine being able to get one, mm. but I, when I see people who would modify their supercars, yes. I'd be like, you got to have fucking money. I used to think that shit was it's, wild. Isn't yeah. that crazy? I'm like, like, you have this perfected wild. fucking product yeah. and you got balls enough to be like, no, 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 bro, More. this shit ain't enough. Yeah. I want the max shit. And, you know, we're blessed to be able to get to that Amen. point and do it as Amen. well. But, man, like, it still blows my mind today. It's like, I used to look at these cars and be like, that's so sick just even having a Huracan. But fuck, this motherfucker put wheels and exhaust and everything. Dump Holy shit. Dump like 30, yeah. 40, even fucking 10, 20 grand. It's like, you're not it was already. That either. Yeah. You, you, you can't that. finance you that. Can't that. You cannot, you can't, you can't fake, fake that. Trust your point, shit like that. What's the, what's been the most difficult car to work on? <laughs> it's not the most difficult car. It's the most difficult thing, which is paint protection film. Yeah. So we PPF specialize in PPF and bespoke exhaust shit. here. So yeah, we can do oil changes and maintenance and all those things but for us here the two main things are paint protection film and exhaust when it comes to ppf i get this all the time people oh i got quoted three thousand here four thousand here five thousand here every single time they get the job done they come back to me the person did a shitty job i quoted them too high then they want me to discount them and they don't want to pay the money for me for my guys to remove the crappy job and they want me to discount my job to us. I told you the first time, get it done right the, the first time. It is expensive being cheap. I'll yeah. say that again. Say that it again. It is expensive being cheap. There's a right. reason why Ferrari, McLaren, Lambo, they, a lot of them send their cars directly to us. This Mercedes got towed directly from the Bay Area Mercedes to us. I get Lamborghinis towed directly to us. You pay the premium to get it done right the first time. And it's not even like I'm like 10 grand over. No, most shops charge for a G63. I've seen quotes as which boggles my mind, five, six thousand dollars. Uh-uh. Here you're gonna pay ten thousand dollars. It's gonna be perfect. You're gonna have no problems. If there's any damn problem, here's your whole ten thousand back. Literally. Yeah. So when I say that, I will refund you the whole ten thousand dollars if you don't like the job. They go, okay, all right. Even that's kind of kind of wild though. Like you think about a lot of the people that are that may be listening to this, just like the realization that PPF on something like a G wagon would be ten grand. Here's the like issue. that would probably blow some people's mind for sure. But what they don't get to is that that G sixty three sitting right there has matte paint. That matte paint costs astronomical. Now if that matte paint gets any chip scratch, For you can't matter, buff that paint. No, nope. mm -hmm. if you buff, nope. it turns what gloss. Yep, literally. Right. So now you go and and you don't have to do the whole thing i would do the front end at least at least at least yeah. minimal the front end yeah bro. at minimal that's what and i then on top of that on cars like this and that the paint on these are actually thin as fuck i don't know if, uh, if you guys know or not but the 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 paint on these cars are actually like thin they're like not yeah. thick yeah, so yeah. Just don't ppf like them the front like his front lip was <laughs> shot to shit <laughs> shot to shit so we had to repaint the whole thing and then ppf the whole thing and all that yeah Ironically, I don't ever people <laughs> cars. I don't care. We ain't got I don't time. care. We got too much clients. We got to keep yeah. it rolling. That's, baby. You're right. That's the issue. My car, I can't even do. Cause you have car after car after car after car. It's a good after problem car. to have, isn't it? Thank God. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Do you guys have any plans for Navarro Motorsports where you're going to take it direction wise, expansion, anything Absolutely. in between? Yeah, we're going to move to another state as well, and uh, hopefully, if that state works well, not hopefully, it will. Um, with will. Will. Yeah, absolutely will. with will. God's help it will uh, go there and then another country and then maybe exit strategy and then on to the next but the, the problem with this is we we love it Yeah, my brother and I this is our passion like we're in the fast food game all right, but then when we come here, like we don't want to go there I don't want to go to any of my damn stores <laughs> I don't go to any of the fast food I love them, they're cool, they're great that's what pays for everything you know, but I don't want to be the goddamn fryer. I'm sick of the damn fryer. For real, bro. <laughs> I mean, so for me, it's fun. But the the side effect, the side effect to being in, in this, I'm so jaded now. I have a 720, 720, 720, SUJ, Urus, AMG, all these cars here. Now you 
three years ago, if you saw me, I'd be like, Bro, fuck, this thing is great. Absolutely. Now it's whatever. The scale of it. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Do you feel bad at all for having that type of mentality and like changing the way you think about things? Do I feel bad? Like, do you ever reflect back on yourself and you go, it's crazy that I at one wish point, it wasn't like that, that you were chasing these things. And now you're at a point now, like, again, and it's everything's relative. So like you're sitting here, you got a 720, you got an Urus, you're already thinking of the next things you're going to scale yeah. up to. It's kind of like people on the internet that are watching this can't even fathom this fucking concept. Absolutely. But you you're, you start at a point, like for example, your first car, even dating back, like I don't even think he mentioned it, but you, your Silverado that you fucking love. Mm -hmm. Think about what you used to think about when you were driving that car. Absolutely. And now you're in a 720 in Urus and you're like, yeah. damn bro, like I guess if I traded these two, if I made some moves happen, I get into mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. And people take that for granted and they go, look, these people aren't thankful for what they have, but it's not about that, bro. The reality of things and i'll just shoot straight here is i can buy this SV, svj i can buy an sf90 i can probably buy a senna i could probably buy a car close to about a million my thing is is that how do i say that i'm trying to convey the message right what pushes me what pushes me is whatever car i buy i must be able to drive so do i become jaded yes but do I, but, but I still stop myself from buying the SVJ. Why? Because if I buy an SVJ, which hopefully I am, I think I am by August ish, if I buy one for $700,000 like him and I put 4,000 miles a month on it, in a year I'll have how many? 50,000 miles? If I, sorry, it'll already have five or 10, I'll have a 60,000 mile SVJ. Most people didn't believe that that 911 turbo would pass 100,000 miles, it's sitting at 120. So whatever car I buy, I must be able to afford the depreciation. I don't care about yeah, the payment. The payment's not the problem. The down payment's not the problem, it's the depreciation of it. What you get back at the end. Exactly. Yeah. So now if I buy this car for $700,000 and it has 60,000 miles on it, how much is it gonna be? It's very true. Four, 350? Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna lose 350 fucking thousand dollars. So for me, it's not that I'm used to the cars. I am, but I still feel like I can't buy it yet. Even though the pay nine, 10 grand a month, I say this as humbly as I possibly can. I'm not trying to sh sh show off or you know that stuff, but nine, ten thousand dollars a month for a car note right now, plus whatever I have now, I can honestly easily do. But it's the three hundred fifty thousand dollars that I will lose because there's no fucking way I'm not driving a SVJ every fucking day if I, I have one. You, I, I just can't do that. I, I can't have this and that and this and not drive it. But fuck that car, fuck that car. I'm <laughs> driving this. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So that's what keeps me going. Is is yeah? Can I buy it? But can I really drive it? That's why on that McLaren, I I bought that instead of a seven six five because I don't want to lose two hundred grand on a seven six five. On that car, I'll probably lose thirty forty. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think most Porsche people don't grasp that concept <laughs> that I buy cars. I drive cars. I buy cars. I can afford the depreciation. Fuck the payment. The payment I don't care about. I think you feel the same way yeah, too. And 100%. you feel the same way too. too. Yeah. Where it's like, like he can buy a Senna right fucking yeah. now, to be honest with you, you know, and we always ha have that chat, but it's like, if he buys it for a million a year down the line if you drive it how you like he put what five thousand on this yeah. thing yeah 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 well i mean for now for me um i i i like to earn my shit so the senna True. i could get technically right now but there's a lot of moves in my own personal goals and my own businesses that i want to achieve first yeah. before i get the senna and everything like that and that's the same thing that happened to sbj i could have got it a while or fewer like sooner but i didn't get it until i reached certain points you know, so um, it, it, for me, it, it's like per, I don't feel like I, I deserve that level car sometimes until I've done what I need to yeah. do. You got to yeah. do what it gives it value. Yeah, it gives it more meaning behind it and everything like that. Like, um, yeah. So can I can I just throw out a simple question? Mm -hmm. okay. This might just be for the this might just be for the gram. So mm -hmm. we'll see how it for goes. Clips. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think is the most overrated car on the market right now? Overrated yeah. car on the market. Yeah. Overpriced, overrated, however you want to look I at it. it. Ooh, I have an answer. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, You're both pretty tapped in on the market right now because, yeah. you know, so yeah. I figured that's that what might we do. Be a we look at cars every night. We're, we're talking yeah, about I mean, overrated in price point. Or we're talking about overrated in right performance just, and everything. Just in, just overall. Okay. However overall, you want to interpret that. I mean, we're on we're on Car Guru's 
on I a daily on basis. Like, yeah, yeah, looking yeah, at that, that's my bedtime. So. Yeah, exactly. that's my bedtime scroll. Exactly. Yeah. It's just it's just fun I, to see where things are at. I'm gonna say my, for me, my opinion is gonna be the 992 GT3 RS. Yep, that's for me. Yeah, overpriced, especially when they're like 600. Yeah, that was getting stupid. That was getting stupid. Ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, mine. Urus, and not only that, and I, I own one. I'm saying it. Urus Perf, yeah, three hundred and seventy thousand dollars. That's a lot. I saw one for four hundred. Four for people who don't know. No. Okay. Urus Perf. Disclaimer yeah, for no. people who don't know. What are the major differences between the base Urus and the S or the Performante S? I don't know, but what I know is I drove them both. They feel the same to me. Because I'm not sure too. It's seats. a body yeah. kit. I'm sure this little. I don't thing think it has a ton fucking Maybe difference. Some that makes that big of a price point grand difference. For that? Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, I, as a Urus owner, it is a glorified RSQ8. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It That's is all the, the truth. end of the day. I'm not gonna say it, but no, it's not. It's still, still a Lamborghini. It's Audi. I don't care. All leather or all Alcan Alcantara? What Alcantara are you taking? for me. Yeah. 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 The first time we sat in a in an Alcantara wrapped uh, interior, it was like. This is this is just this hits different. Well, That's how his uh, 765 LT. Yeah, you sit yeah, in his 765 versus mine. All, yeah. Yeah. Night and day. It feels all, special. It feels, feels amazing. Like a, I love Alcantara even though like it like you know it it doesn't really last as long or hold very well. I think it was a great experience. I love oh, that fuck fucking yeah, material. It's a different vibe. Even when you're fucking driving and you look mm, around, yeah. bro, I'm telling you, all that shit. And you stay like, in no, place. There's no glare on anything. Yeah, oh my God, you stay yeah, in the fucking stick. place. You do not move. That's, that's why I fucking yeah. love that. You look thing. at that Alcantara down the dash. Maybe you had someone detail it and brush yeah. it opposite. Oh, yeah. Like, that, that's the best part of the details. Yeah. It looks yeah. like, a, yeah. like a clean front lawn. And I'm too poor. For going back over to And I think if we're not just talking about price overall, I think just. The overall, I think, most overrated car right now in general is a GT3 RS. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, GT3 yeah. RS specifically. Yes. Yeah. Um, specifically those, like, the 991, 992. 991, 992. 992 those are used, especially. Is so yeah, especially 992. 992. Cause that's where all the mainstream people yeah. came in. I, I think, think 997 is a very special GC3 RS model yeah. because it's still, you saw a manual transmission, so it's yeah. a very special car. But after that, uh, yeah, I think it's kind of over, overrated. I don't think a lot of people realize how. Uh, take this next word with a, a grain of salt, but slow the car is. It is it's slow. You like in comparison to a lot of this stuff, right. obviously, like it's built for a track. The arrow is insane. Yes. It is yeah, a track cool. weapon. But if you're on the highway and you step on it, mm -hmm. you're not like, going. Yeah. yeah, you're not going like you are in the SVJ or a 720 or 765. It's like that's the a whole different world. The problem is, to me at least, what I think is that most people just haven't experienced what really fast cars are. Mm -hmm. And I can attest to that. When I had my 911 Turbo, when I, when, I, when I first got the car, I went, what is faster than this? This feels ridiculous, right? And it's a 991.2 Turbo cab. So it's like 0 to 60, like 3.1, 3.2. And I was like, dude, this is ridiculous. The launch control it fucking throws you in your seat. What's fast? I, don't, I couldn't comprehend it. Literally, I would be like, what the fuck is fast? Then I drove this bitch. I'm like, god damn. Then I drove the 765. I was like, holy shit. It just, it's just, it's insane. It's so with the RS, is it a, it's 600 grand? 992? No, they can't. No, no, no. They're, they're oh, like really? in the they, fours, mid like fours. Four, yeah. Even four. Even dealer on. market, our, I think is down a little our, bit relatively Our too. friend just bought, just bought one. Yep. And it's a beautiful car. Gorgeous yep. car. And I'm happy for him beyond. He spends some money on that thing. Yeah. I, can, yeah, I, I think it's imagine. a 300K car max. Yes. Yeah. Max. With the market included. Yes. Bro, and you're talking about one of Porsche's fucking top things that that's their have. flagship car right exactly. flagship. Yeah, it is the sickest looking everybody 9 can get that car for what created. it actually is at the msrp is about 229 yep. or something like now that come on i buy that bitch right now yeah. for yeah. the 992 gt2 rs is gonna be insane yeah that's gonna be crazy yeah but that's that, the, imagine that being like 600 grand again it's gonna be like I, seven, probably, yeah people are gonna spend like 800 when it you know comes a gt2 though that is a good bang for your buck too that is a great bang for your buck car what are those like 400 no no those are low threes you get some for low threes now. So now, so what, now what I'm model? teetering. A GT, uh, GT2 RS? 991. Oh, 991. Yeah. So, so now yeah. I'm teetering between what car do I get next? Yeah. So the Urus is essentially my lady's car. That's staying, yeah. Yeah. So that, and that's getting wide body 1016 kit, MB forged wheels. You're going to wrap it or is it going to be silver? Oh, I'm wrapping I hate that color so much. <laughs> I fucking can't stand it. Um, and that McLaren, the color underneath is ass. Same color. It's oh the same color. Yeah. Pol Polaris. It, it, ironically, it, 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 Polaris ironically. Blue. Where's your 720 for the? <laughs> hey man, hey man. <laughs> I'll, I'll play it. I'll play it. Hey, I'll, play. Hey, hey. I'll play it. I'll play it. I'll play it. Uh, my cars are fucking his car. He drives everything. <laughs> I don't fucking care. Um, I feel. I feel. Bit <laughs> Bro, you did this on boy like that. The man. people get to see the truth. Uh. 
I'm and on he his walked ass into it. We've already years. Been he doesn't about it. buy one. I don't know why. Any, any, anyways, um, the 720 under that, it, it kind of killed the fun, actually, of buying the car. It was such a this shitty spec. Such mm -hmm. a shitty spec. But I did everything, so it's cool. But anyway, so I'm going to sell the 720 eventually. I don't know what to get next. I'm choosing between the S. Now, mind you, before you say anything, it's my daily. Yep. Whatever car I get next, whether it's an A12, whether it's an SVJ, whether it's an SV, whether it's a 992 Turbo, whatever it is, I'm driving that bitch every fucking day, and I'm driving from this store to that store to this fast food spot to that fast food spot to here to my mom's in IE to, you know, and I'm driving down to San Diego. I, I drive the fucking car, yeah. so I have to factor in depreciation on that too, right? And driving it every damn day. And I have a herni her herniated L4, L5, sciatica down my legs. Fuck me. I'm beat to shit, homie. I'm 27 on the outside, but inside, Probably because you got 200,000 miles in supercars. Fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so say, I don't do know what route to get. Every time I see this, today, behind me, I'm like, fuck, the thing is beautiful. And you're like, man, but that's going to that's gonna mess up my back. Actually, it's not that uncomfortable. It's not that bad. No, it's not that bad. The SVJ is more comfortable than the 720. But you, you just walked into like my, my next question mm -hmm. for you, which would be like, okay, so forget about depreciation because yeah. like that's making your decision difficult. Right. Pretend that's that's not even a thing. Okay. You've got like a, you can keep your, your Urus or whatever. You have an SUV, whether it's the Cullen and Urus, but you get one supercar in the garage and that's all you get mm -hmm. today. I what are you answer. taking? Is there a cap on this question? I mean, supercar. Yeah, yeah. No, no, so no, no not a cap on no, the price. No I already have that answer. But I actually, me and, me, and, me and Jeff are, this, are the same, same on it. Same answer. 765 LT. 765 okay. LT. For us, well, you want to say it? You got the mic, buddy. Uh, Mercy Lago SV Ooh, is my dream dream. And That's not, not only answer. that, in Arancio Borales, I don't know how to say it, it's orange. Yeah. That's my dream. That's the only car, God willing, one day God gives me enough funds to be able to buy a car like that. Um, I like the Rosso Mars. Grosso Mars is also nice that, too. That, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good color. Arancio Barras. So the Mercy Mercy Lago was the very first car that actually got me. Sorry, I'm like McLaren F1 was the first first car. After that, Mercy was my was the first car. I actually remember the first time I ever saw one. I was on the Same. 91 freeway passing Kaiser Permanente in my dad's BMW X5, and I was in the back seat. I could barely see over. And I just see blacked out mercy. I'll never Hard. forget. I go, Dad, one day, I was young as hell. I go, Dad, one day, I'm going to buy that car. And do you know what my dad said? If you become a doctor to my Southeast Asians, my South Asians out there, you know exactly yep. what I'm saying. One Old day, school, if you become a doctor, doctor, you will buy that car. And every, my whole childhood was always become a doctor, 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 doctor. And so for me, that car always felt unattainable because I was not becoming a doctor. And so now that I'm, thank God, growing and growing, like that's that's the car that's like my be all car. Yeah. I love that car. That was definitely like my, until the Aventador SV came out, mm. the Mercy SV was like my number one. Mm -hmm. um, sounds God, ridiculous. It, sounds so, it just it's, looks it's, beautiful. Yeah. But I remember the first time I saw a Mercy as well. It was yeah. like um, pretty young and it was, it just like changed my world. It was like, a, it was a charcoal colored. It was in Sedona, Arizona. It pulled up to this hotel we were staying at. And I just saw this car and was like, Wow. This is this is a spaceship, and I gotta have one. It's yeah. peak Lamborghini right yeah. there, and yeah. that's the one car you would actually ice out too. Like you wouldn't really put. That's a car I, I, I can't not not drive. That, oh, so that's no a car I would, yeah. no yeah. I would try to not destroy. Right. That's a car I would try to like actually, actually like. You're driving take. that bitch too. I'm sorry. You're gonna drive that thing? Oh yeah. You gonna drive oh, my car? Yeah. That's 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 my like. I made it. So not seven six Bugatti. five. It's just sorry. Yeah. No sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it would like if you had a if like I would take, call me crazy, I would take a SV over a Bugatti 918 Senna, all those cars. Like like that's my dream car. I feel like yeah. if I get that car one day, I'm done. I retire. I'm done. That's it. That's fair. Right. There's only three fifty. I mean, the badge goes so, up to three fifty. They didn't even sell them all, right? So, so there's like three twenty or three ten or something. Found out. Darwin Pro out of UK. Now I hate. Converting cars. You'll never see me throw a kit on that thing to turn that 720 into a 765. Never. Never. I don't attest to that ever. You won't ever see me buy a 991 Carrera and turning it into a GT3 RS Carrera. Whatever. Never. But because the Mercies are so limited and so goddamn expensive, uh, <laughs> the truth, right, is you can get a 2007 Mercy 
you can buy a kit for $25,000 and turn it into that. Now, my thing is, is I don't buy these cars to stunt and flex. I'm not going to go around saying, yeah, I got the SV. Never, never. But just the way it looks, I would do it because the way it looks. It's perfection. And I would always say that's not an SV, but I love the way the SVs look. I don't mm -hmm. want to spend a million fucking bucks on a car that's 2000 Seven. You can just leave the sticker off. You got yeah, the body kit and yeah. the sticker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's what I, that, what, that is what I might do. Maybe. Maybe. Can I ask you a non-automotive question? Absolutely. You talked about a little bit about your dad telling you that you being able to obtain these things by being a doctor. Yeah. At what point, because I feel like that has to do a lot with like, for example, is your, your father was born here or born back? Pakistan. Pakistan. Pakistan, yeah. He immigrated here when he was how old? 27. 27. So a good amount of his life back home then. Yes. I feel like again, a little bit back, a little bit of background about me is I come from Cuban upbringing, so immigrant parents, same thing, everything between. Yeah, that is a big old school mentality. Absolutely. Is that you got to mm -hmm. do what society tells you is the correct thing to do, yeah. so that you can reach these attainable heights. But in all reality, that's not the blueprint. Absolutely. At what point in your life do you feel like you were able to break out of what your family's mold was for you to change your mindset to become the person you are today and to be able to achieve those heights that, in all reality. Not saying a doctor couldn't, yeah, but that salaried, controlled figure mindset can't really do. So here's the beautiful thing: a lot of people know, some of them don't. I dropped out of high school. Wow. And I went to college afterwards. Yes, you can go to college without a diploma, believe it or not. I went to college. Somehow, I attained a three point seven five for a year and a half. I dropped out of that too. And when I dropped out of that, my dad basically told me to eat shit. You need to go solve it on your own. I said, all right. He was still there for me, guided me, X, X, Y, Z. It wasn't until recently, a lot of people don't know this a lot do. Now that I'm done, I can say it. I went through a divorce for the last year and I was hands tied, homie. <laughs> I was locked up, bro. I couldn't spend this, that, whatever, blah, blah. And uh, I'm done now. So basically... They didn't know how much I made till now. And they still don't know. The other day, me and Kevin gave away a car and my mom called me. And my mom was like, what are you up to? And I said, um, giving away a car. She goes, what? I went, yeah. It was like, I was like, mom, it was just a 2007 uh, Camry. And on the phone, it's recorded. You can hear my mom and dad go, how much m m money do you make? <laughs> and I, was, I started laughing. I was like, don't worry about it, mom. It... It wasn't until recently that my parents started seeing like, hey, our son's actually doing good. It didn't matter which cars I bought. I had the 720 last year in June and I had the G-Wagon 4x4 and I had the AMG GTS that I spent me and my brother dropped 52000 on and I had a 911 Turbo. But because I didn't have a degree to them, it was like... You were doing nothing. Exactly. My brother's one semester short of his bachelor's from Cal State Fullerton. You still, still getting shit for it? Still getting shit for it. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling still you, bro. Still getting shit for it. That and immigrant old school upbringing, bro. He's 40 fucking one. And the, I married. know there's I know mom's still getting him shit. As soon as he walks yep. in the house, still getting him shit. Drives he's a Lambo, married. too. <laughs> still yeah, getting him shit. He did have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Now he beats the shit out of an X5M comp. Like, he drives that thing like it's a fucking Camry, you know? <laughs> and, you know, he still gets shit for it. So, and I forgot your question was... Basically, my, my, my main question was, this was beautiful, the story and everything in between. So, like, I, that's yeah. kind of where I wanted you to go with it. Yeah. But the qu my question was, at what point in your life did you realize that that path wasn't going to get you all this? The doctor so correct here's the path. Thing. So, I, it, for those of you guys out there that are in school right now, every, everybody thinks I hate school. I do hate it. I hate it for if you're going to go become a psychologist, if you're going to become a degree in business, you're getting your degree in anthropology, you're wasting your fucking time. Now, if you go for MD, PA, law, and even specific law, engineering, and even that specific engineers, great. Kill it. For me, I knew that for me to make money with a degree, it had to be MD. Not only MD, I had to open up my own practice because somebody in my family, my mom's sister's husband, he was an anesthesiologist. He is. And he opened up his own pra practices, X, Y, Z. He was making a killing. So as a kid, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, I got to go to, to, through school for 12, 13 fucking years. I'm going to be 32, 33. And then I'm starting. Yeah. 
I'm gonna have a seven twenty when I'm in my forties. What, what if I that? what if I drop out and I use that same four, five, six years to go do something else? Feel me? Absolutely. So now I'm twenty seven. Thank God, Alhamdulillah. If you don't know what that means, that means thank you, God. God. I I say that left and right. Um, no one knows how much I make, and I like to keep it that way. We keep it on the deal. But I'll put it to you like this. Um, I'm trying to convey the message in the best way possible. Uh, a doctor's salary in less than a month is nothing insane. Hell yeah, baby. Thank God. And Hell I yeah. say that as humbly as I possibly can. Um, it still trips me out till this day how much I make. make. And But a lot of pe people also don't know. I also went down to 72 cents. To you my, felt that to my that to back my against the wall fucking suffering feeling where like kind of like you touched on it a little bit and i wish i would have touched on it more too is like when you have to make shit happen yeah. people don't understand that feeling yeah. of like no there's no like this whole failure that's not going to work that shit isn't uh, that's not possible it can't. People it's don't going to work concept. and then they, and then i've seen it with fucking him and you know me where they don't understand is that when you start something, you must have conviction that this is going to go through. Yep. When you start something, it's not if this is. When you start something, it's not, well, if this goes right. Uh-uh, homie. If you're doing something, you're going all in. You have to be pretty delusional about you it. You have to. Bro. Yes. You have to be Beautiful delusional. word. You have to scare people with the way yeah. you fucking describe what you're yeah. doing. Like, even you talk about your goals for this place. I'm sure people talk about it and they're like, bro, he might be a little off the edge everything. But you believe in your fucking vision. Mm -hmm. You're going to make that shit happen. You have to scare 99% of the people out there. Aren't meant for this life, bro. Yeah. You got to scare those motherfuckers. Because once you get into this, there's no looking back. There's no, no there's bro. No I can't back. imagine going back. I can't Going back to a job, bro. I How? couldn't believe it. I've never want to buy Taking yeah. orders from somebody, bro. <laughs> Taking <laughs> orders from somebody. Yeah, bro. Like, forget that, bro. Crazy. Let me tell you, it's, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fuck, fuck. I'm in the process of breaking the mold right yeah. now. I mean, our our vision for like this yeah. would probably, there's probably a lot of people that would call us crazy. Absolutely. So like As right now, should. it's a it's a podcast. We're a few months in. And like the production did not look like this. I mean, even a Ab month ago. Absolutely but not. But like no. we're we're pushing hard. We're pushing this, and it's like this is only like this is product one but that's under what the supercar when you connection. Start. You just Literally, start and it gets one hundred percent. So like when we first talked, we're like, we could look up twelve months from now, and barely anything could even like we could we could barely be anywhere still. But like you got to think down the line like where are we going to be in 3 years 5 years long term mindset here's, here's yeah. what here's my thing and every in, in in the community that i have everybody knows what i say and and it's the i had a conversation today with a dude my age almost he's talking about i want this and i want that i'm working hard blah 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 I said okay really nice guy i'm not going to sit here and act like he was a, you know not nice really nice I asked him, I said, how many times a week do you go out? He goes about four or five. I go, okay. What do you drive? BMW. Okay. How much do you save? This much. What do you do? This or blah, blah, blah. I mean, you don't want it bad enough. Mm -hmm. You don't want it bad enough. That's right. I didn't ha I'm not telling you, you got to get up at 5 a.m. every day and go to the gym and you got to be on that crazy ass. What's that guy named? Iman Godzi, yeah. crazy regiment. I'm not saying, I'm not telling you read 17 books yeah. a fucking day. I'm Ooh, not saying bro. that. I'm not. What what I am saying though is that you gotta lock lock the fuck in, homie. You gotta get your priorities. You gotta straight. lock the fuck in. Literally, bro. You gotta stack the that, fuck bro. up. You gotta stack up your bread and learn. And and once you learn, once you stacked up, you gotta go take the jump. I don't care if you're doing FBA, Section Eight, opening up a shop, whatever it is. You gotta go. You gotta start. Don't sit there and tell me you're trying everything, but you haven't started. Yeah. Oh, I'm afraid because I don't know everything. You're not gonna know every goddamn thing. You're not. You just not. I didn't know everything here. Now I'll build you a thousand horsepower car like this. When I first started, I didn't even know where to buy film from. See what Jump I mean? Jump in the pool, learn how to swim later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You yeah. got to take the I risk, mean, bro. You're never going to know the answers. You only find out the answers once by you do things it. and then you start to fail. Every time you fail, you learn. When you fucking learn, rinse, repeat over and over and over again. And the problem, another problem that I actually learned today, I was talking to, you know, one of the, the guys we were hanging out with the other day. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I was going to do it, but I was worried about this, this thing right here. And this was a step. 20 30 like not even starting <laughs> yeah, in the business you're worried about time. step number 30 it's like yeah that step number 30 prevented me from actually taking action when it was like bro you don't even you'll you'll learn that when you get to that point 
just start with step one. The funniest all thing you need. is, Break it down. I get dudes that ask me about FBA, and I always just push them over to him. But the the most annoying question is, I want to start, but I don't know where to file my LLC. Oh and I want to go, bro. That's not where you start. You're talking about running, and you haven't even started crawling yet. Literally, bro. Yeah, we're worried about the wrong things. It's like you, what what you have to understand is, you only have to worry about the things that put your business in motion that are going to make mm-hmm. money. Not the back end shit, only the things that actually are going to produce and move the business yep. forward. Yep. Right. And it's like, you don't need all of this extra Zen shit or whatever, like fluff. A, the fluff, the window dressing, the, the, all that the shit. The thing that makes you feel good, like you're being productive. You just need the most immediate thing that is going to progress your business forward. Mm-hmm. Right. So what is that going to be? You, st- you establish that one, that one step and that's where you focus into it. And then it's like, you're going to, you're not going to not, you're not going to know everything firsthand yep you learn it as you go and as you learn these things you go through these trials and tribulations you're progressing you're one percent better every single day and the next thing you know you can be in a position to where like oh shit i'm ready to buy my first supercar but you have to you have to get through that rite of passage first man you have to start you gotta, you gotta pay your dues, baby. how did you, you get started in the in the fba world i'm sure there's i'm sure most you know, of your followers are probably yeah like yeah, heard yeah. The story i mean already but so if you guys don't know like um i own multiple brands on amazon uh private label so these are brands that i own i don't wholesale or anything like that these are companies that i started and partnered up as well um and so the way that got me started was i i literally was a very resourceful person if i want answers i just go on google so that's what I did. I was like, I'm tired of working a personal training job. I'm tired of working for somebody. I'm tired of spent, uh, switching over my time for cash. How do I make money more passively? How do I make some money online? So I Googled that. How do you make money online? That was one of the things that popped up, right? When that popped up and I was like, this shit makes sense. I buy products on Amazon all the time. Why wouldn't I want my products on there as well? Mm-hmm. So that's what got me into the game. Six years in the making and everything. And I put... I've always put money back into that business. How I long did it take you to like start seeing success from from that day? You Googled it and yep. were like, "This makes sense." I'm, I'm I do started this. basically immediately. immediately. Immediately, I bought a course, started learning everything. As soon as I finished the course, I started so placing my course. order. I bought a course. Yeah, yeah, I bought a course. I bought a course because it's like I don't know what I'm doing. Like yeah. I I literally don't know what the first step is. So I need to learn, and then after I learn, take the, the immediate action. So that's exactly what I did. First thing I did was go learn. After I finished learning start contacting suppliers, find a product, whatever. Like I, I went through the whole thing. Took a year of failures, lost like 15 grand and like that 10 to 15 grand. And that to me, when I was only 20 years old working a personal training job, making only 3K a month, it's wow. a lot of fucking bread. Right. right? Yeah. And so um, after, a, after that first year, I had to restart, save up my money again and then give it another shot. Three times I failed on three products and which accumulated to over $10,000 in losses. And I still did it. And most people would have fucking called me crazy. Yeah, how many people? I mean, the percentage of people that would have stopped after that is yeah. probably ninety nine. After the first, after the first, ninety nine point nine percent of motherfuckers. You, you bro. lose. You I was lose just 90, about to say that that's what separates the one percent from the ninety nine. Yep. Literally, bro. That's See? as simple as that. Here's the one thing I've always, always lived by, and it's that if I see somebody else doing it and they're um, successful at it, that means they did something right, and that means I'm doing something wrong if I'm trying to follow that path. So mm-hmm. I just need to simply figure out what they're doing right mm. if bridge the gap there's a gap obviously between where i'm at and they're at i need to bridge that that's it it goes back yeah. to what we talked in the beginning you get the envious or you get to emulate fuck yeah baby and that's what it goes to like hey 99 percent of you guys are gonna be envious the one percent is gonna be like all right how do they do that how can mm-hmm. i recreate that let me emulate that yeah mm-hmm. and that's what separates it yeah yeah the, the formula is already all out there everything mm. you could possibly imagine that you want to build you want to start any business is already out there you have to go out there and apply it yourself. The, the game plan's out there already. Yeah. It reminds me of a story. When I was a kid, I was in Newport Beach, young as hell, 15, 16, with all my friends. We were in my sister's Corolla. Leaving the beach, some kid drives by an Audi R8, young motherfucker. All my friends, who are not my friends now, they all said, oh, it's probably his dad's car. Some bullshit. You know, I swear to God, you know what was going through my head? What the fuck did yeah. that kid do? It might have been his dad's. I don't fucking know. But in my head at that time, what the hell did that kid do to be able to get that? And you fast forward now, those friends now are doing shit. What did that do? Somebody <laughs> bought that car. Exactly. Somebody, 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 somebody bought, bought that car. car. You got to fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm sitting there like, what does this fool do? Right. 
I'm that's not sitting just, with Oh, how come he has a car? He's too, he's too fucking young. Da, 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 da. I'm, not, I'm not doing that. That's just and the coping Until this day, I don't do that shit. Like, it's it's like, exactly. Uh, it's not like it couldn't be his it's because coping. that makes me feel bad yeah. about mm-hmm. myself. It's an excuse. I'm not there. You hit the nail on the head. Yep. Right. People say those things because they hate where they are in life. Fuck so yeah. then they're going to project their own insecurities on you. Don't hate on me, homie, because you couldn't pull the fucking trigger. That's right. Don't hate right. on me because you couldn't sacrifice the shit that I did. You were You've been to Coachella. Since. Exactly. Yep, you went to Coachella. You yep. traveled the world. Yep. You done had fun. You bought the cool cars. When I had the Volkswagen Jetta, you were driving the fucking M4. Mm-hmm. When I had the base, base Dodge Charger, you had the C63. When I couldn't go travel and shit, you were going to Tulum and Cancun and doing this, this, that. Popping bottles and all this bullshit, exactly. wasting time. I, I never, I never did. I've never touched alcohol in my life. You know Hell that? Yeah, never. Not one fucking time. Hell yeah. I, I just, I was too locked in. Yeah. Right? When you were out with this bitch and this bitch and doing this and doing that, what was I doing? Married, locked the fuck in. I went down to 72 goddamn cents. I had no money in my fucking account. I invested every last dollar into my business that then I stacked up to $120,000. Then I lost that in 30 fucking days. Then I stacked up. <laughs> I hey, if you do it ass. once, you can do it again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the best well, yeah, You learn a skill set over time, really. Yeah. But a- after every failure, every time I fucked up, I look back in hindsight to what? 2020, right? Yeah. And then I said, oh, that's where I fucked up. That's where I fucked up. That's where I so hindsight's 2020. You guys got some insane cars. A lot of the, a lot of the people listening want insane cars. That's mm. why they're listening. Um, what's your number one thing to them? Your number one. Your number one. Whatever Fine. advice. Final nugget, baby. Yeah, I got one. Um, you want to go for me? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. My thing is everybody knows knows me that that the uh, the things that I say is fuck it, keep pushing. That's my thing. Something happened. Fuck it, keep going. You, your girl left you. Something happened. Fuck it. Keep going. Lost your job. Fuck it. Go find something. Don't sit there and mope mm-hmm. and dope. You don't got time to waste. Let's fucking go. Don't dwell on the You lost past, money. Baby. You invested in something that fucked up. That sucks. And I know what that feels like. It's going to be okay. I comprehend the fucking, I'm trying to look right at I know what that feels like. You, you're telling everybody I started this thing and your whole family has their eyes on you. Your friends have eyes on you. You posted about it. You started it up. It failed. I get it. I've been there. I know what that's like. I've been down to zero. I've been below zero. I've been below zero. I'm talking to you right now as I got these two, three fucking cars behind me and more cars outside. Remember this, homie. I went down to zero. I know what it's like. I know the embarrassment of failing. I know the fear of fucking failing. I know what it's like to have a significant partner and they rely on you and you can't provide doesn't matter fuck it keep going keep going don't stop can't right. stop won't stop keep fucking pushing something will fucking click that's right as it's long crazy as you as keep your head down you keep fucking going they've probably heard it before and it's either you either catch it or you just miss yeah. it. yeah literally yeah and um to touch up on that once you start going and you keep going you also want to uh you also want to make sure that you keep staying in that lane and don't get like too, uh, like that that golden or what is it like shiny object syndrome. That's what it is, yes. right? So people get really really overwhelmed because there's so much opportunity out there. There mm-hmm. is a lot of shit you could do. You could literally make money doing anything. Mm-hmm. There, we're in a shop right now, and there's so many different ways money can be made in this shop. Literally, my Whether PPF you're... guy makes two grand a week. Yeah, kids young. Literally, like there's so From many PPF different week. opportunities from whether. Yeah. In here, you're fixing shit or wrapping shit or whatever. But for anybody starting out, man, you got to see all these different different opportunities, but pick a lane and stick to that shit. There you go. He hit the stick nail on the fucking it. head. And once Tunnel that vision. does well, once you become a master at that craft, then you, then you move on. Damn. Then you Thank move you. on to- Keep the winning yeah. product, the winning thing. I get exactly. asked, like, should I do exactly. Section 8 and FBA and- Bitch, pick one it literally doesn't thing, matter. motherfucker. <laughs> Goddamn, you can't get one thing right. How are you going to get three things right? Get yeah. right. Come on. I, I get people coming to me, I want to start FBA, and everybody, I've already started something else. Like, okay, then just keep doing that. I'm not telling you to force you to do what I do. Just get really good at what you're already doing. And that's what people fuck up on is they want to try all these different things, mm-hmm. but you need to get good at that one thing first. You need to stack your bread and use that bread to make moves, right? But they're already hedging their failure, right? Yep. Literally. So, like, they're already- Damn. The moment they do fail, Damn. they go, hmm. Oh, okay. On to this. On to the yeah, second option that's because right. I'm already, I'm already, I've already started on this one too. You got so they're just. Oh, like that one. Huh? Yeah, that's good. That I like that. that. Already yeah. hedging the failure. Yep. They're already they're hedging you, their failure by so trying right, to like dude. pick a bunch of lanes. They're throwing a bunch of lines out in the water. But they don't like, understand that was part of the progress because you just learned what would 
could have worked and what didn't work. And now you got to keep going. Right. Once you pick a lane, you got to stay in that lane. Be consistent as possible in that lane. And then you can move on to other things. I'll give you a horrible example. I don't want to say this, but <laughs> this is the best way I can say it. If you have four girls, hear me out. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's on board. If you have four girls, you can't make every single girl happy. All right? And again, I'm not advocating for you to have four girls. Four wives, maybe Jeff will, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you just saying. You have a lot of money Idea. Yeah. Just, just got to get the bread for follow that. Follow me here. If you have four women, you can't make every woman happy. You just can't. That's why, you, that's why we stick to one. So right. We give them our all. Same thing with business. You find one thing, you give it your all. I was trying to do this and trying to do that and trying to, I was in a desperate state. Decisions made in desperation are the worst fucking decisions in the yeah, whole fucking mankind. Bro. Whether you're buying a car, a house, whatever. Never do anything in a desperate state of fucking Facts. mind. That is advice from my brother to me. There's thank God I have him and he helped me with, with that. But I still had to fuck up too, right? Now, what was I, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so you go all in on a thing. Once you get that one thing stable, then you go to the next thing. Get that stable, then you go to the next thing. And that's why we have such a successful circle of friends yes. or we have a trend of this is a trend amongst other people who are very successful is that you continue to spend money on opportunities yep. over and over and over yeah. versus the unsuccessful yeah. person doesn't spend money on any opportunity at all tell them about zade what about zade the land oh <laughs> <laughs> the man that buys the you mountain. gotta interview this fool he's this guy's fucking crazy gentleman so i mean he owns a recycling business but he puts his money in in buying um uh, this plot of land in LA and he bought like a few few uh, uh, plots and everything. This motherfucker's plan is to buy the whole fucking mountain. He's bro. the funniest guy. So he's in Hollywood, right? So he's, and th there's, that's why we, we were saying there is levels to shit. He this is our boy, him. right? And he's just conversing. Shout, shout out Zade. Yeah, shout, shout out Zade. Zade, we love you. Uh, that's the, dude, you have to meet this guy. I will. He's actually yeah. co coming next Saturday. You should, you should, uh, he's, he's going to speak here. So he's conversing, goes, yeah, I bought six pieces of land in Hollywood and I'm going to build these homes. I was like, oh, six. So what's the plan after? I'm asking, are you going to sell them? He, right. goes, he goes, oh, I'm buying the mountain. And all of us paused. We're like, he kept going. No, he, yeah, he, like, he has he a whole plan. He, paused. he, he kept going. He said that shit like it was nothing. Yeah. We're like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold up, Zay. You just, you, you don't just skedaddle past what you said like you didn't say what you just said. We were like, you're buying what? He goes, the mountain. <laughs> like, what? He goes, yeah, I'm buying, the, he's buying the whole mountain. I don't know what the hell that even means in Hollywood. Yep. Right? And this dude makes really, he's worth $180 million. He's on something. And yeah, he's on something. He's but on he's still spending money. He's, he's still, he doesn't need to do anything. And this is not even his main thing. It's not even his, his fucking thing. But now he's like, oh, I want to build these homes, flip them, buy the mountain. I don't fucking know what that means, but sell that. <laughs> buy he's, the mountain. All our homies are just on it. They're on it. Constant. Yeah. yeah. So buy the mountain. Literally. Damn. And buy the fucking mountain. That's it. That's the slogan. That's the Buy slogan. the motherfucking mountain. Yep. You heard it here first. Whatever you say, people should pause after you say it and say, By what? Because yeah. he was he was Stay able to make you guys pause. Yeah. Huh? Stay Think yeah, about he that. Made you guys pause. He was able to make y'all pause. Yes. Yeah. Think about that. Yes. Our job like dropped. We talked well, about like, literally like levels to the game. Yeah. Like there's yeah, shit y'all said that make me kind of go, bro, fuck me. I drive, bro. I mean, I'm driving multi-million dollars in, in cars right now. And I'm, I still consider myself a small fish. Shame. I, I feel am you, bro. A Same. Small fucking fish. Still feeling like we're not doing enough. Like and, we but not do in more. a bad way, though. Not yeah, in right. a bad way. It's more of a. It's a. There's so for me, I'm. I'm optimistic. Yeah. It Absolutely. means like, damn, like I can do more. My life doesn't end here. I don't. I didn't finish my life here. There's still more I can attain. Here's I what can, scares me. I can challenge myself. <laughs> yeah. Does this ever cross your mind? We're twenty. You're twenty. Twenty-seven. We're both twenty-seven, and thank God we are where we are. Does it ever occur to you where we might be at like 40? Fuck. It's going to be scary. Sometimes it crosses my no mind. Clue. Like, I wonder scary. how far I can go. Uh, yeah. the, so Johnny's baby. That's a Tony great, great, great far thing you mentioned. Shit. Like, you know, like, I wonder how far. That's what drives me a lot is my curiosity. Mm. Of yeah. Who I am. How far can Kevin Pack take it? You know, while maintaining life and everything, whatever. Yeah. But right. how, how far can I push my skill set? You know? And cars are just kind of like a um, 
a motivator on the way there. No, like but that. like a, a better indicator of these things. It's a yeah, more right. concrete indicator of things, right? And on top of that, we have passions for it. But it, it, it that's what sparks me because I'm like, I wonder if I could do this. How far can I take how this? How bad shit? a motherfucker can I be? Yeah. How, how, bad how can I get? How well equipped of a motherfucker can I be? Yeah. Yep. That's why I got into not just like in business, but I'm into, you know, like um, combat sports and things like that and like all that shit. Like, because I want to see how much of a capable man I can become. How much of a weapon you can be? How Literally. much can I be a weapon? Yeah. Yeah. How Literally. much of a weapon can I be? I like that word. I'm going to have to register yeah. with the yeah. state pretty yeah. damn soon, That's bro. Right. You watch. Look at look you, look mark my, mark my words, bro. Yeah. Mark my words, bro. You need to watch register time. those now. I'm going to report you, sir. We're not, we don't now, do this guy. I always contemplated getting tats. I can't. I'm Muslim. Jaff is too, but he don't care. I do care. Okay. <laughs> you know, I want, I, bro, but things, if I ever got, ta- I'd be blasted, bro, neck, ears, fucking I'm eyebrow. Coming. I'm coming. I'd have, like, Navarra on my fucking <laughs> mustache. Oh, you're blasted, blasted. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, you, you put me to shame. You got it. Yeah. Let's go all the way up I'm here. coming. Because, again, I feel like you even said it, too, getting tats in your Muslim stuff like yeah. that. Like, my bro, when I got tatted, bro, I went home. Bro, my grandparents whooped my ass. Oh, See, that's yeah. Oh, my, my grandparents? God. My grandparents don't know. Oh, no. I'm wearing long sleeve hoodie every time I'm going. Oh my over. god! Even, even June, having these I'm on, a bro, tell me why I've been doing this. Tell me why I've been doing this. Like a big ass. Bro, are you kidding me, bro? Yeah, my, I got disowned at the crib, bro. Oh shit! Yeah. Disowned. My, my you know what my you know what my dad too. did when I got when I got my fucking ears pierced? I come home late at night. I thought my mom would trip and my dad w- would be cool. My dad's a calm. Me and him are polar polar opposite. I walk into the house at 11 o'clock at night. I'm fucking tiptoeing. I was like 20. I'm like tiptoeing inside. My mom hears me, comes downstairs, sees me, sees these, and she was like, oh, "That's dumb." I was like, "That's it. That's all she." I was like, "Okay, cool." You thought you made it. You're like, all right, cool. Okay, so I go upstairs and I go to my room. Five minutes later, my mom comes back and goes, "Your dad found out. He's fucking livid." I go, "Fuck." I avoid my dad. For, my dad's a scary motherfucker. He's like a Pakistani Joseph Tell Stalin. Tell me the phone contact name. Scary, scary <laughs> man. <laughs> scary man. <laughs> my dad's name on my phone is scary, heard, scary bro. man. That's what that's telling everything. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so I'm I'm like avoiding my pops at all costs. I don't want to see him. I don't want. I don't want to hear anything. One day I come home early. I fall asleep on the family room sofa, on my stomach like this. It's over. I wake up and I look to my left. And my dad's sitting there, legs crossed like this. Me mustache. She's just twisting, staring. At me. <laughs> I go do salam alaikum, dad. Fuck. I'm like, fuck every fucking go. I sit up, not even a second go. I came to this country. I built all this shit. I did everything for you. And you pierce your ears. You look like a woman. I'm like, fuck. Oh, yeah, Rail this. I don't drink. Bro. I don't have tattoos. I don't do It's just a little thing. Fucking just give me this little thing. I'm trying to stop. Probably a little swag. Just a little bit of swag, bro. Riz. A little riz. Bro, I, tell, bro, I, tell, I can attest to that big time, bro. I will say this, too. I will say this. I want to say this. A lot of people like to say they're self-made, this, this, and that, blah, blah, blah. I don't think anybody no. is self-made. No, no. I am where I am because of the family that I have, the father that I have, the Hell mother yeah. that I have, the brother that I have, the friends that I have. Everybody has always almost believed in me. There were times where my mom said some pretty gnarly shit to me and made me question myself. That's because I had a hardcore mom. Yeah. Kevin and I relate to that yeah. a lot, actually. But I want to say my, my dad is the most gangster dude out there. I'll cut my hand off for him. When I dropped out of high school, no, when I dropped out of college, he told me to eat shit. He said, I will support you. I'll guide you. You're going to solve it, son. All right? I said, all right. He was extremely hard on me, but I'm blessed to have him. Probably the best thing you could have done for oh, you, too, yeah. bro. My dad is a G. My dad yeah, is appreciate a G. appreciate the people every, around you. Literally, bro. Yeah. I'm sorry? I said appreciate the people around Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I never want to sit here and be like, oh, I do. No. My father treated me so kindly growing up i had cops coming to my house left and fucking right i was that kid getting in fights and road raging and crashing cars this in hand handcuffs and all that being outside getting patted down my mom comes outside with dough on her fucking hands and her son has hands behind his back 19 cops outside she's like what the fuck's going on yeah whole i got stories and stories and stories and stories dude and my parents never gave up on me my mom it's pretty hard on me. I will say she said some pretty hardcore shit growing up. But they they would always tell me, you can't if there's anybody that can, it's you. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking powerful shit, dude. Anything I'm blessed. Else? And not mm-hmm. not not everybody has that. No. And no, I sure. acknowledge that. I acknowledge that. Not everybody has parents that support them. 
and care enough to fucking care about, care about the, the fucking decisions you make yes, and shit like yeah. that, bro. Not everybody has a brother like mine that supported me. He's fucking extremely hard on me. God damn, he fuck, fuck. <laughs> My brother, it, dude, some people would quiver in their shoes if they had a brother talk to them how mine did me. That's also where I am now, too, is because of that. But some people have that, too, and crumble, and then... Yeah, and, and then, then they, they sit there, and they get defensive. Yeah, yeah they get insecure. It's how you receive that shit, yes, dude. Absolutely. You, you, you receive it from a point that he wants the best for you. Yes. Not yeah. from like, a, why the fuck is he acting like this? Why has he got to get on me like that? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Again, yeah. that's just as, perspective and mindset. Yeah. yeah, I mean, as, as, like, as a kid, there were sometimes, like, damn, my brother's so fucking hard on, on yeah, me. Man, fuck. But now I look back at it, I'm like, thank God he was. Sometimes yeah. it was brutal. I'm not gonna lie. I, I keep imagine, I keep saying because he was he was really really hard on me. Dude. Like yeah. really hard on yeah, me. Yeah, I but. mean, there's there's a lot of things you wish that could have been better. Yeah. I wish it could have been better as well. But it's like I'm I'm grateful for everything that came to be because it's like that all led us to where we're at today in this moment to meet each other. Perfectly, to meet you so. guys literally being sitting and, right here in this fucking um, thing. And you guys are playing a certain role in us leveling up to the next yeah. thing as well. So it's like. Yeah, and I don't think any of us are really. It's all part of the journey. It's, it's all part of the journey. No one's Literally. really self-made. I think we, we, but we, we definitely choose the right people to be around us further and further and further. Yes, hundred so, percent. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, if you don't got it, get the it. fuck out. Yeah. I think honestly, I appreciate you guys coming on here and spitting all the facts and everything in between. Probably easily one of the most motivating episodes to just see and really? connect. Absolutely, bro. The oh, way wow. you guys Same. talk, yeah, bro, hundred percent. The Thank two you. of you, the three of you, the way you guys speak and the presence, everything we in between, never bro. Even fucking talked about Jeff. Jeff owns one of the very successful. Mm -hmm. clothes. I apologize. We didn't have a mic for you, Jeff. Yeah. I, I, I apologize. I wish there was a stand with a mic and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put we'll do a run it back. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're gonna run it back next time. Jeff, Jeff is the man. Throw out your fucking shit. Nah, nah, I'm vibing. We're gonna do that part two. We're gonna do part two. We're gonna do a part two. What's it called? P B P B and J. What the fuck is it? We gonna, we gonna run it back. We gonna run it back. Pretty boy and cold clothing <laughs> yeah. brand. We'll run it right, back. We'll run whips, it back. Everything in between. Because I'm yeah. excited yes, to see where we go. If you guys like this, enjoy this. Hey, so I've always been told, and I don't mean to take your guys' shine, but I've always been told to start my own pod. I don't know if that's something I would do or not, but if you guys think we should, I would say me, let Kevin, you, huh? Oh, I'm just saying, let us know. Yeah, no? we would do it. I would do it. Follow all the boys yes. at Kevin Pacman at Navarra Motorsports, right? Novara and then you're Cossum. N O V A R A K A S E M. Really, Jeff. That's it. Hundred percent, sir. Y'all won't know if it's gonna be a good podcast unless you guys start that shit. Yeah. So That's take some fucking true. action and start Ooh. that damn thing. Gotta put the reps in. That's right. Yeah. It just someone got it work. You're looking at, you're looking at some issues. guests if you ever need it too. I'm sorry. If okay, you yeah. started, yes. you're looking at some guests. It doesn't if you ever have to be to. this much work. It's just you know, it wasn't for a while, and then we we were like, all right, time to make this excellent. So mm. yeah, mm. but that's a wrap, baby. But this is not how it started. Love it. But yeah, that's a wrap. Thank you guys that's a wrap. so much. Did it. Did Hell that yeah, thing. Please.